And tomorrow I went to the Super Bowl, the TSA was there. I proudly let them search for bombs down in my underwear. I thank my lucky stars, they're filling me up today. Cause trading my freedom for safety is the American way. And I'm proud to be an American where the terrorists hate our freedom. And I won't forget bomb sniffing dogs and snipers crawling the stadium. And I gladly stand up in my seat. Let my wife be grow by TSA Cause there ain't no doubt I love football God bless the USA Good evening, people of Earth And welcome to another episode of Black Sheep Rising Your weekly dose of late night frivolity My name is Conan Soliday And joining me James, Robin Hood, Cleveland, and Garrett Ian. Gentlemen, thanks so much for being on. Hey, thank you. Uh, you? Daryl decided that uh, he would take an evening off so he can watch uh, something about football or something. Oh, God. Uh, We played played a a very patriotic uh, song there before we, uh, what, what was that song all about? Where did you find, where did you scrap that up? Uh, I just saw it on some website, and I thought it was pretty humorous, so I decided it was a great... Um, it's pretty telling, actually. Yeah, football is a great American tradition. M- American, so, American. Yep. And so I think it's important to point that out. And, uh, exactly. I guess it's like a cannabis thing now, too. I mean, it's good that you put that together. I guess, I guess a lot of other people have already come to the to that conclusion. But the fact that it's Colorado versus Washington, yeah, which who both? has the better cannabis law? <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's kind of strange how that worked out the way that it did. Maybe it might even be I don't know, maybe a little enhancing drugs. Maybe maybe a little. The clockwork elves, all of it. I shouldn't even get into it. Uh, I think you could be on to something. M- maybe there. the maybe the master planners are you know trying to set us up to you know. Well, you do you do know that Obama was commenting on marijuana, so. I oh, mean, did you hear about be... the State of the Union address? How they they cut at the end, so you didn't see him leave the podium. Uh uh-uh. uh What they what they cut out? He w- he celebrated the legalization of cannabis in the United States. Yeah, he lit up a big joint. So you got right that, the... but you got that part right. Well, they cut it out on TV. I didn't get to see it, but oh. I heard about it. It was predicted in advance. I guess he had said that, and it was like tweeted, but then they redacted the tweet at whitehouse.gov. I don't believe you now. I think you're just making... Well, no, I heard about it. It was even posted about on Facebook before the State of the Union address that Obama was going to be lighting up. Uh, it said like midway through he's going to light up and, and announce legalization in Colorado and how it's cool now. But... I thought it was unfortunate they cut away. It seems that the powers that be don't want there to be obvious knowledge or knowledge throughout the community and among the people that this step has already happened. Mm-hmm. Green is legal, herb is legal. You can grow it. It's safe. It's it's wonderful. Do you think that... Uh, so, I mean, ma- many of the dissenters are... Uh, but now the forbidden fruit must be tasted. ...are of the opinion that, you know, once one state gets it, you know, the rest are going to fall like dominoes, and then it's just going to be chaos in the streets, you know, hippies raping each other and killing each other so they can, you know, afford the next score. I mean, I mean, what do you think is going to really take place? I mean, I mean, have you ever seen that, uh, that South Park where Obama wins and they're all celebrating? I mm-hmm. think that it will be like that. Just like that? Yeah, it'll be like a party in the streets. It'll be awesome. So, well, Is that going on in Denver or is it just a party outside of the dispensaries? I don't know. I think I, it's a party outside of the dispensaries perpetually. Probably. I'm, I'm waiting for I'm waiting for Weed Street to get their own Bitcoin ATMs just set up right there at the at the beginning of the street. So when people come in, you know, Wait, and there's they, a Weed Street there. There will be eventually Green or Green Street. Mm. You know, one one or the other. Yeah. But I mean, own that commercial. But the problem is, is that they're they're making so much money that the some banks are not accepting uh, weed money. Yeah, I heard about that. That's pretty funny. So, but but guess what's not a problem at all? Yeah, Bitcoin. Bitcoin. So I mean, that's that's uh, who you can't trace that stuff. Well, I guess 
I guess the uh, some people are getting getting tracked down, but uh, if you if you're really careful and you you know, well, even if they know your address, I mean, you can just make a new one and send your coins through a mixer to the new one, and mm-hmm. I mean, you're pretty much set at that point. Exactly. So, guys, Robin Hooders, hell's been going on in these these last couple of weeks, months. It's been it's been a good month and a half, two months since you guys have been on. Uh, last time we talked, uh, you guys won in court, or actually, I guess you could say it was thrown out. Was it thrown out? Won? How did? How, did, how would you? Dismissed. How would you put that? It was dismissed. Uh, good, big, big old win for you guys. Uh, but lo and behold, uh, the uh, the the wise city planners and their and their lawyer types decided that. Uh, no, there's 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 more there's money to be made off of this, you know this you know we can't or or we're not going to take this lying down. I mean we're going to central gonna... committee had a secret vote and DPRK is marching on. Now I wonder if so you know they... and, 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 and by the way what I'm talking about is they're appealing it. It's going to the next the next yeah. Level. So now it's going to the New Hampshire Supreme it's going Court. Supreme. Right. And I, I I was just pondering uh, if the New Hampshire Supreme Court kicks it back. And then, you know, they have another case, and we are now supposed to pay the cost for damages, or we have to pay, like, the whole appeal through the Supreme Court. I don't know. Because that would be insane. I think I think it would well, be... you just appeal the next thing up. You just keep appealing. I think the appeal is perpetual. Yeah. Oh, so we would go to the U.S. Supreme Court. Yeah, we go to smoke the it up with Obama. Capital. Yeah, <laughs> President Hume <laughs> Summit. I think what's Joint insane Summit. about the whole... I think, it, I think it would be insane to actually lose... Um, I, I don't think they have a case in the world. Uh, I think you've mentioned that uh, your guy, your attorney, John Myers, is of the same opinion. They don't have a, they don't have a case in the world. Um, and even if we had done all those horrible things that they allege that happened, I, mm-hmm. mean, I mean, that's all, all protected speech anyway. All so. of the uh, <laughs> slapping around of the uh, meter maids, you know, out there stepping on their toes and touching them and. You know, oh God, you guys are horrible. You guys really are horrible individu- individuals. Mm-hmm. I, I can't believe you're even on. Um, no, you're good guys, good guys, and and it's all it's all nonsense. Um, the I, I mean, mean, Robin Hooding has. I mean, continued. I mean, I mean, even even the even the stop your nonsense. Even the uh, the most outrageous video that ever came out of that wasn't even from a guy who even lives here. Um, the Cantwell Chronicles. The Cantwell Chronicles. But, uh, and Cantwell was not even filming meters. His whole point was to go out there and talk to the enforcers. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he he made some comments to me like, "Oh, I wish that they would, you know, just sue me instead." You know, I'll, you know. I think he's that's that's the kind of publicity <laughs> he's looking for. Yeah, I think you're right. I think he, I think he's kind of he's, he's he's probably hurting that uh, he didn't get any of that, and uh, that's exactly his whole game plan is to. It's to rile people up like that. Maybe at the Supreme Court level, they'll legalize Robin Hooding and say everything that we're doing is cool, but they'll at the same time ban and then rendition Cantwell. There you go. <laughs> and there'll be a Supreme Court ruling that specifically bans him, and it'll be a huge controversy. And Just one person? Obama will speak on it and be like, he said these very <laughs> terrible things. He even said that I would die and stuff. <laughs> uh, he wants to send me back to Kenya or Hawaii. Uh, uh, he's, jo- a, he's not very consistent with anarchist principles in deeming people to be illegals or whatever for being from a different country. Unbelievable. Yeah, and Cantwell's really a master. I mean, we're talking about him right now, so... Oh, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he, he won. won. <laughs> he absolutely won. I mean, he, he won't stop publicity. This is his lawsuit. <laughs> no way. Cantwell won. He won the argument for sure. So, the city... Uh, is appealing, All right, and official DPRK, right? And they they put this what almost a two minute, two and a half minute commercial. Yeah, well, I guess they've ha- seen some of our videos on Freeman TV Raw and on Free Concord TV and Free Keen, and so they've been putting out their own stuff under the Aqua Keen guys. Have you have you come across the actual person who's putting out the the DPRK? Uh, oh, we actually tried to find out who edited the videos. And it's kind of a secret. There's no bill for it, so presumably city funds did not go for it. Mm. Now, what I'm thinking is someone in the lawyer's office had something to do with it, and then they paid the lawyer some bulk amount, 
And then they were like, oh, well, the video was done through the lawyer, so we don't have paperwork on, like, here's the bill for the video right. because it was just the bill for the lawyer or something like that. But if that video was put together by a legal firm, the one that we 91A requested about, the one that was put on uh, DPRK's website. Now, these ones they put out on YouTube, but um, there's w uh, one that they put out on their website that's really bad. It has a... You know, it has like a little counter at the bottom that counts the number of times that they cut or something. Yeah, it's really fun. I, I remember we, we we actually played that on the on the show many many episodes ago. Oh yeah, way back in the day, way back. History. Um, so you, so you, but you haven't actually run across this guy who makes these videos. No, I mean, watch we find out. It's like the mayor himself or Prince John <laughs> that has these editing skills. <laughs> He's like an amateur uh, video editor. He, he probably actually goes to Keene State and he's taking a video editing class. They have like a multimedia editing like skills or something. Like, or they might even actually have like a class at Keene State. It's just called like anti or it's DPRK uh, propaganda. Yeah, or, it's probably a secret class, like a government and they, and agent. And they all get together, to students, and is like, "You want to be in a secret project? Like, this will be great for your future." Yeah, and we'll, we'll uh, do a job with the feds. Yeah, we'll, and we'll reduce your tuition as well. I mean, we'll take a reduction from your tuition if you go ahead and help with this project. Mm, I can see that. It's kind of like being a teacher's aide, kind of a thing. Yeah, but I don't know who made this. It's two minutes. I like it. It uses some of our footage, and uh, so, outstanding. Yeah, yeah I've, I saw it, and uh, and. Uh, you were worried that I had already played it on the show, but I hadn't. Uh, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and warm this thing up. From history to present, we're brought with this video directly from the official Keene City bureaucrats. Our official DPRK denies integrity of royal ruling. DPRK officials have launched official investigation into robed superior of court following most possibly treacherous decision to limit means by which our city may combat disharmonious terrorist Robin Hood outfit. Disruptions caused by money key wrenching of subversive reactionaries has significantly disrupted the people's budget. This city depends on that revenue. That's the reason why you're getting sued. Because this is revenue. Most negatively affecting effective revenue collection. While royal judge made most sincere decision, central committee will make official determination into appropriate committee response. And committee pledges to people pure and unanimous vote. Meanwhile, best attorney for DPRK, Bauer Charlie, has denounced vile and degenerate interpretation he holds for the people follows ruling. The order holds that the individual protesters have no duty to be reasonable in their actions and conduct directed toward public employees while doing their jobs. Ellipsis. That the individual protesters are allowed to interfere, harass, and intimidate public employees while doing their jobs. Ellipsis. And that the individual protesters may engage in inappropriate and unreasonable actions and conduct directed at public employees while doing their jobs. Clarification. Official DPRK does not stand beside statement of honored attorney Charles. No endorsement of harassment or interference by official DPRK. DPRK officials in How far with can Central case Committee. for official DPRK proceed with no limits for glorious DPRK? Do you think it'll make it all the way to the Supreme Court in Washington? Yep. Concluding, official DPRK wishes most heartfelt welcome new term to returning beloved mayor Lane Kendall. Most victorious landslide congratulations defeating challengers Daryl W. Hutchinson and Bradford <laughs> Perry. <laughs> Yeah, this is all because we, of course, found out that uh, Daryl Hutchinson and uh, Bradford Perry fell fell short of the uh, of uh, dear leader uh, Kendall Lane, who uh, who took the seat once again, once again. So that's a, that's some pretty harsh uh, uh, propaganda there. It sounds like it's came straight out of North Korea. I mean, what's going on with these folks? I mean. What are they learning at Keene State, these video editors who, who, who slapped this together? 
Well, I, that's still a conspiracy theory. If yeah, it could be that, that young lawyer who was all hip and like, I know about videos. I'm I'm young. Yeah, he, he so, specifically I mean, cited the Aqua Teen channel. That's who I think did the editing on this video. The young, the young I think lawyer? I that that young lawyer who was in the Superior Court... Who was like, I know all about videos. Here's here I think he even played an Aqua Keen yes, video in the court. He played an Aqua Keen. I mean, that leads me to believe that he makes these videos. And he may be still on the city dime. I mean, we don't know. It could be maybe he enjoys doing it. He who distributed it contributed it. Yep. So I'm thinking. So all right, so what's the next step? I mean, are you guys preparing? Or are you just kind of just sitting back and just uh, doing what you do? We're still uh, Robin Hooding. Eh? Uh huh. I know that. Yeah, I mean, I was out um, yesterday and I had a fantastic time. I mean, the weather was nice. Um, I probably got, if I had to guess, 20, 20 or so saves. So that was a pretty good feeling. So excellent. I mean, I was out probably two hours. So you know, it was just a good, a good day all around. But and the Robin Hooding is continuing. I mean, we have no plans on on stopping or, you know. Have they uh, have they th- have they tried to throw any other monkey wrenches in your guy's way, like these new meters? I mean, how is that working out for you? And, and ex- will you explain how the new meters work? Ain't no thing. Yeah, I mean, it's it's some kind of like you can pay with your phone thing, but. I mean, I guess we'll we'll see if uh, it takes off and. So everyone has every every meter now has a number on it, and it also has a. Is there a scan bar for it? Uh, just a few uh, areas. They're doing like a trial program on this new system. But oh, but they put but they put the numbers on all of the meters, though, right? No. Huh. So you if, you, if you look designated DPRK zones. Yeah. Exactly. There's a video about that, too, where I kind of go through Yeah, there's it. a video on YouTube with James. It's a minute and a half long, if you want to pull it up, where he explains about the new zones. Let's do but, that. Uh, Look up... Uh, uh, just go to the Aqua Keen channel. It's it's right there. It should be, I think, one of the most recent videos. There he is right there. Oh, no, it's the second nope. one. Yep, All right, so this is, this is you walking around in the snow, uh, wearing your Bitcoin jacket, <laughs> and explaining these, uh, these new silly-ass meters. And these are... This is what Winter Street. Yep. Mm-hmm. So this, this that's, is near the old so that's where they're trying it out first, or uh, they're trying well, it on also Winter and some other places, Gilbo. Because mm-hmm. the I see all these, I see these. What is it? Four four digit numbers on all the meters now. Is that a new thing, or are they, have those always been? Yeah, there? those are the new DPRK zones. They're green stickers. All right, let's let's, the video. let's go ahead and play this one up. There we go. That's an example of one. Yeah. The DPRK seal on it. Rolling. Okay, so we're in the zone 7702. That's the uh, new official DPRK zone. And across the street, I guess we can go over here. So this side of the street, the south side of Winter Street is uh, 7702, I think it was. So that old wind blowing. This side of the street is 7701. It's really important that you put in the right zone <laughs> so the DPRK <laughs> will know which zone you're parked in. <laughs> oh, you guys are some hooligans, man. I don't, I don't think I'm going to accept that. So, did you actually try to buy some time on a meter? Uh, no, and I, you know, I have not tried it out. It, it seems fairly complicated. Like you have to go make an account, and well, the thing that gets me is, yeah, well, yeah. Once you, yeah, but once you make the account, I mean, it almost kind of makes sense. The thing that gets me is you're paying an additional fifty cents on top of your the irregular amount. That, so the so the actual company who's taking care of this for the city is making fifty cents per transaction, uh, and, and that's a little obnoxious. I I think you're it's still a guessing game. I I, I believe so. Let's say you pull up to a spot and you're like, "Oh, I think I'll be here for 40 minutes." Like what? What it should be with this new system is, um, you put in, and then when you come back to your vehicle, it should end the time, and you should pay like the exact amount that you used. Mm-hmm. Because right now, it's, I think it's still a guessing game. So you're like, right, you have to you have to buy an hour or two or whatever, and then. If you if you come back out and you only used twenty minutes, you, yeah, you and, the, lose and that. it's even worse than that because at least with the old system where you put the coins in, 
uh, someone else in theory could come and park at it. Exactly. And, or and now that's just lost time, you know what I mean? Because because the time doesn't show up on the meter. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there might be 40 extra minutes on that meter, but the, 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 second guy, the second clown pulls up, he loads his up, but lo and behold, there was forty minutes. And I said, "This is this is this is tragic. This is I can just see these uh, these meter companies, you know, who come and sell their wares to the cities. You know, this is this is just more revenue for the city. Except it's all blanked out. You can't. The screen is blank, so you can't see any of this nonsense. This is yeah, the only way. This is really <laughs> this is horrible. My tactics is I'm just going to do a little bit less priming in those areas because mm-hmm. I know the way the DPRK patrols them is in mass." Go on, get. Go on, get. Oh, G's on TV. Yeah, G is G is hasn't been allowed in this room uh, since pretty much you guys were here last. Mm, uh, he really wow. is. You guys don't slap him around enough. I mean, right there with all that tail wagging stuff, he really needed a slap in the back of the head. I know you don't want to. But he's a <laughs> he's a dog, man. He can't not wag that's his how, that, tail. That's how you. Well, he no. See how he is right now. Look how because he's laying down and how settled he is right now. That's that's how dogs should be: settled, calm, quiet, just like children. Uh, I mean, to me, I'd so patronizing. (laughs) My my whole goal in Robin Hooding is I don't want the city to issue tickets. Mm -hmm. So in theory, if people use the system and you you know, I I think you can remotely like add time to it, and it, it gives you like a warning when you're about to run out. Now, some of the areas it's in are two hour zones which means that you can only add up to two hours. Some of them are 10, which means you can fill up for the whole day whenever you want at any point. Right. But those two-hour zones, if you put time on them electronically, they are using that information to write two-hour tickets, whereas they're not always chalking tires in a wear when people are parked at meters for two hours. So they could have come by and checked when you were about to expire over two hours ago, and you've since refilled, and they wouldn't know any better as the AKPF Enforcement Division. So it's important that people understand that using this system can get you two-hour tickets, so be careful of that. Yeah, wow. Yeah, another thing is kind of funny. I was out yesterday, and uh, one of the AKPF enforcers had written a ticket, but the person had paid with their smartphone, and so then she had to rescind it later. Hmm. So, you know, and, and if you go online and you Google the system and scam and fraud... There's like all these uh, people complaining about that, like, oh, I pay- I use the system and I got a ticket anyway, and uh, you know, is it is it just because well, it's just because the parking forces are not up to date yet; they don't know where, what meters are what. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it could be there's something wrong with the system. It could be that it's a training issue, like maybe they're not used to it. I was thinking, I know the DPRK probably sees us with our technology, and they're like, we want to be like them. That's why they hired Sturdy. Um, trying to emulate us. Mm-hmm. But now there's a next level thing going on. I think these iPhones have something to do with it. Now, I don't have a smartphone. When I'm out there Robin Hooding, I just have a uh, camera and maybe my flip phone that tells me the time. But the DPRK, I'm sure, has been paying attention to these Hollywood films and these commercial advertisings that are going on right now. It's, it's Super Bowls, and there's all sorts of commercial and corporate interests right now uh, at work. And I believe that it's because of what the DPRK is seeing in through these media, like the five gum commercials, that I don't the, know that one. The technology is you don't what know they five feel. gum. Yeah, I, they they feel that they need that technology. Is it like, like five guys? I'll I'll pull one up. It's like um, cobalt's probably a good one. The best gum ever. You know it because it has a good commercial. Yeah, pull up five gum cobalt. So, Keen, you, what you, so what you're saying is that they're just trying to catch up with us? You think? <laughs> now, doesn't that make you want to buy that gum? <laughs> You've never you've never seen these commercials. That's a gum commercial. <laughs> yeah, it looked like a car commercial to me, like a space car. Well, I hear, uh, holy Vic crap! Is, Vic Diesel is going to be uh, rumored to be in a movie for Five Gum coming up. Are you? Is it is it the same guy who was putting together the uh, propaganda, Keen propaganda videos? Oh, I don't know about that. 
Who is Vic Diesel? For for our people, our listeners who don't know, uh, Hollywood celebrity. Yeah, yeah. He's also, I think, a race car driver. Uh, on the headline of his Facebook page, it says, "I'm an actor, philosopher, and race car racer." <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Oh, so, crap. I mean, he's all of them. I don't know if you saw, I think you guys talked about this. Yeah, you want to play the duck video there? Again? <laughs> have, you, have you played that one? I think we played it. Is that the one with the nice editing and the rotating effects? Like the the, the, the spinning? It spins and stuff? Maybe, maybe we didn't play it. Which one is this one? Oh, the, the, the left no, one. The one all the way on the left. With the glasses. That there one? you go. Yep. We did talk about this last week. Um, Daryl cannot stand this story. I don't know if it, I don't know if it's because you guys covered it. But he, but definitely, Keith, I think people are afraid to talk about this. Well, Keith's and Keith's a big proponent of this story because, you know, he's always bringing it up. Daryl's of the opinion that the only reason he's bringing it up is because Keith is a Republican. This guy he ran the ducks over supposedly is a Democrat. He definitely is a Democrat, no supposedly. And he and it's just and they're just playing their political wars right now, and that's and that's what all Daryl sees. And I tend I yeah. tend to agree with him as well. well. I think that people love animals, like you know, G is an animal, and we love him, and mm-hmm. the cat too. Name is um, Jiu Jitsu Ducks, yeah, Ducks <laughs> Okimo whatever, or something, yeah, whatever you <laughs> <laughs> um, OSHA, OSHA, no, that we, would, we wouldn't go with that one. No OSHA, no, no, this is actually like on the, the ground reporting, it has, yeah, the, sure. the 911 call. I mean, yeah. these ducks didn't do anything wrong, and this guy was in a place where you shouldn't be driving fast. This wasn't on the side of the highway, this was like in a hotel kind of parking lot. So running over, fi- killing five ducks and injuring many more means that he was going very. So fast. were there? So that's the question. Were there in fact dead ducks? Yes, five of them. Oh, oh yeah, there were dead ducks. There was dead ducks and injured ducks. Now last year I saw these very ducks with my own eyes. I don't know if they were the ones that were run over, mm. but so sad. I saw ducks in in the. You could have actually fed. I think you could have actually fed breadcrumbs. Liberty Forum. You could have fed breadcrumbs to a duck that is no more. Yeah, and it w- and it's not even in someone's stomach. Like I mean, if, if someone actually, you know, went and consumed those animals, maybe, maybe. But now, the fact that it is dead and rotting somewhere, horrible. It's I horrible. think we should have a memorial service for the ducks. Uh, at we Liberty go Forum. To, yep, at Liberty Forum. Well, we we, gotta- I, we briefly, very briefly, talked about the actual conspiracy where the guys. Buddy, the police commissioner, this video delves into it. Yeah, actually, might have had something to do with what went down. So let's let's go. Hey, and you think my drunk friend can come in tomorrow morning instead? I know, I know. <laughs> How do you like that? The, hey, so he he flees the scene. He goes and hides out at his buddy's house at an unknown lo- location and gets his buddy to call in for him. Very suspicious. Very now, suspicious. How could Daryl not love this story? I, 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 it has I, everything a good political scandal and a cover up. Maybe because you guys made a video of it. That's why Daryl doesn't like it. Quite possibly. Here we go. Censorship. I think Daryl just doesn't like videos. Police Marine. Hi, Marine. Yeah, it's something about text. Hi. Um, if you could send us an officer by, we had a well. There's New Hampshire uh, vodka. We ran over four or five ducks right in the parking lot, and uh, global New Hampshire liquor store. Might have an altercation between him and another guest. Okay. We'll, we'll not let them make it go. Will not what? He will not let the issue go. So if you could send somebody by to. Okay, media. so in the main parking lot. Uh, he's pulling into the garage right now. Into the garage. Okay. Yep. All right. What kind of vehicle so they can get right to it? It's a dark uh, black BMW with uh, looks like state rep plates 3-16. 3-16 black BMW. Okay. Thank you. Bye. All right. First of all, the garage. Thank you. Bye. Uh, Asher, please. Tracy speaking. Hi, Tracy. This is Tom Pappas. Can you send me to the desk sergeant? Sure. No. Thank you. No, who, is, is, is this, is this, is this a the guy? Pe- Sergeant Camacho? Uh, Sergeant Camacho, it's Tom Pappas. How are you? Mm. Hey, how you doing, Commissioner? Good. Um, I understand that um, you folks are looking for David Campbell. Is that the David guy right Campbell. there? David um, Campbell. Not sure. Let me... Anybody look at David Campbell? Yeah, he ran over us. killed five times. Oh, is that the accident? Yes, sir. Yeah, they were looking for him earlier on second shift. Yeah, um, he's a friend of mine. He, okay. He's he's at a friend's house. Oh, who's this guy? Um, I don't. His like phone Obama died. Um, That's a police commissioner can, speaking of Obama. Uh, keep your is eyes peeled. Okay, if if I have him come to the station tomorrow morning. Uh, yeah, because uh, I think the officer 
that was working on it, that is working on it, he's uh, he already left for the day. Okay. Um, so I think that would be best. You want to just talk to uh, Hatsi Petros <laughs> tomorrow? Whoever does this Aqua Keen, they got some mad video skills. I don't skills. have the details of what happened. I, th I think that'll be fine, Commissioner, if he just the comes in. Snow Ducks. In. Okay, should he ask um, anybody in particular? It's uh, Officer Hatsi Petros who's uh, investigating it. Okay. Um, but he comes in on second shift. Let me see if he's working tomorrow. He might be off tomorrow. Okay. Uh, yeah, it says he's working tomorrow at three o'clock. All right. So may maybe he can maybe he can leave a message in the morning uh, for Officer Hatsi Petros, and that would show that he called. And then okay. he uh, and then they'll tell him he'll come, he comes in at three, and then he can call him at three o'clock and make an appointment to see him. Okay, I'll have him call the station in the morning. And, uh, and they can leave him a message, yeah. Okay, I'll let him do that. <laughs> All right, thank you, Commissioner. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, bye-bye. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right, hey, that's the second time I've seen that. I'm, I'm of the opinion. Daryl's got to have to. Daryl's going to have to come too, uh, to realize that. Uh, yeah, those guys are those guys are buddy buddy, and they're working together, oh, and they're far screwing us all. Oh yeah, it, this is much bigger than dead ducks. I mean, as bad as dead ducks are, that's uh -huh. not nothing to be overlooked. And that's why I think it's almost like when you have two atrocities, it's like one can always deflect to the other, and they can be like, well, there was no scandal. He accidentally hit these ducks, and you're making a big deal out of it. And it's like, well, I kind of maybe just accidentally hit the ducks but you're making a big deal out of the scandal thing and this dis deflection i think it's just important to go in the opposite direction of censorship and be open to the idea that this is garbage what these people are doing did, did any of the main uh news outlets cover this story oh most definitely the nashua telegraph has been on top of it i hope that they uh well i don't know i mean as far as i can tell most of these characters are they're all the same whether they're politicians or police commissioners or or politicians whatnot. like, hey man, we all get drunk at the hotel bar and <laughs> run over, some, run ducks over and, some ducks. And now you can get drunk on the official liquor of New Hampshire. Yeah, I mean, come <laughs> I on, he was about drinking that. the right stuff. He wasn't drinking no <laughs> New York beer or anything else. Or smoking a little doobie. And to be honest, I'm disappointed right now that... Um, Unfortunately, for creative censorship reasons and for Cheshire TV, I'm not able to show you the label on my beer with Maggie Hassan's face, but it's been removed. It's been creatively censored. That's not a but Maggie Hassan beer, is it? Picture Maggie Hassan's <laughs> face on this beer. <laughs> if you're viewing it home right now. Well, in actuality, I think you can uh, show the images uh, on this particular show. You just can't tell people to drink it, I think. From what I understand, the Maggie Hassan beer is only available at the Woodstock Brewery itself. But there might so be you'd some. You have to go there to get it. But there might be some New Hampshire law that prevents you from uh, portraying her face on any television show. But you know that she is on the beer for the. She's well. She's promoting the vodka, and her face is on the beer. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen her promote the beer with her face on it. I've seen her promote the vodka. I saw that video as well. Yeah, she was up at the podium giving a speech at the at the Capitol. It's horrible with the the vodka out in front of her and saying how important it is to preserve the flags that have been destroyed by war. But, did she say by war or by time? Well, I don't think she said they were destroyed by war. But that's what the flags are there. They're all tattered in war. They're for, like flags. There's from another war. war for you. The war on time. We just can't. We just can't win. Now we've got to you know raise revenue by selling some ugly ass bottles of vo cheap vodka. And those are really ugly bottles. They look like piles of doo-doo. <laughs> Speaking of, there's this television program that's new on Cheshire TV. Uh -huh. And I think the climax of the first episode involves the New Hampshire vodka and, uh, you know, dogs taking care of their business. I saw in that. Fact, a television star right here, G, is involved in that. I don't believe he uses one of the bottles, though. This is the hardest. He was, yeah, he, he hid, his poops were hidden. So there was no uh, need to uh, censor them with uh, doo doo bottles, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, right he the dog has a hard time during the winter, and I wanted to really capture, you know, how hard it is on him and his and his fellow brothers and sisters, comrades, um, who have to go out uh, butt naked. This guy is butt naked. Some dogs have you know a nice coat on, but this guy's not not doing so hot. Yeah, his underside. I mean, his back is he's got the fur hookup, but mm -hmm. not so much his belly. So he's so he's essentially out there in some old wet, cold snow with his with his bits just dragging in the snow, and he's having to 
oh, it's just horrible for some of these guys. I want so I wanted to capture that and let the people know, you know, this is this is you know a situation that they should be aware of. And if, they, and if, if they, and like if they if they can fix up some kind of a of a uh, of a, a restroom facility well, for their dogs, I they mean, should I go ahead and do rituals. it because I mean he has so many rituals he needs to go through. And I mean, I don't mean to offend if it's like a religious thing because you're not supposed to offend people's religions. I don't know to him if it's like religion he has to do this or biologically he needs to do all these spins and dances. To I, I don't know. He's his, he's right there body. and he's not his ears aren't twerking or anything. So I mean, I guess he's uh, I guess he's not really. You know, it's probably a conversation he doesn't want to have. I imagine it's pretty private. It's quite possible. <laughs> he's he's probably dreaming of warmer times in in the South, <laughs> uh, just just waiting for the day that to go back and live with his Southern dog friends. Never going to happen. Never going to happen. <laughs> he's he's going to die here. <laughs> in the summer, he probably thinks it's like the South is coming back, but it goes away every time. I'm sure it astounds him. He's definitely a cold old dog. And a, and a bad dog, but he hasn't knocked any cameras over in quite some time. Yeah, we played that uh, video on the show uh, last week or the week before. Oh, the knockover um, camera? No, 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 not that one. The actual dog poop snow. Mm-hmm. Dog poop snow video. <laughs> Was that while there was uh, other co-hosts? Yes, Daryl was there. I think he even mentioned it. I think he uh-huh. reminded me to play it. So he wanted uh-huh. he wanted to talk about why the video was made in the first place. You know, why would you, you know, take this nice song and put these dogs on it? Well, the it's, an, it's an important issue, and this needs to be talked about. And I just don't. I guess Daryl just wants to creatively censor it, and not show the plight of these animals and. I that's mean, really sad that that's he takes that position. I think he identifies as a cat person, and maybe he's like, "Oh, well, I don't care about dogs." And, and yet, and yet he can't get the cat to come sit on his lap. Oh, really? Uh, I don't Whoa. think it's happened once. So maybe he's not a cat person. Maybe he's just hiding behind that that wall. He, he could, refuses to open up to G. Uh, I think he is a cat person because I was at his birthday party, and he had like a little kitten. And he was like holding the little kitten and you yeah, know yeah, petting but, it. Yeah, but kittens can't get away from you. Yeah, that's a good point. Once they grow up, man, that Crap. that's when they turn into the little the little misers that they are, and they won't come over unless they yeah. unless they want something from you. Now, have you seen the Daryl Perry soundboard? Yeah, we t- we talked about that as well. <laughs> we talked we talked about the Mark Ian and Daryl soundboard, and a lot of those drops are from this show, actually. What mm-hmm. I was wondering is why the "I don't have to adapt" line wasn't on there because I think that is is truly one of the top five. <laughs> I I'm not sure who CV Raman is. I think he, I think oh, we, that's um, he's uh, what's his name? He's a guy. He, yeah, he's, he's definitely been a guy. Associated with Free Talk Live, I believe, uh-huh. in the past. Yeah, but I know, but is I his name Nick. Who, who are you talking about? The guy who made the soundboard. Uh, I know I've met him before. Like he's been to Pork Fest and Liberty Forum. I think in the he, past. On his website, he has like a bio, and you can read about him. And but yeah, he's apparently found these important lines to have been uttered, and he said specifically these are Daryl's lines from Free Talk Live and Black Sheep Rising. No, because when you get Daryl uncensored without the FCC or the FAA involved, uh-huh. you get some gold. Like that's where to cut a steak comes from, and that's where uh, I think a lot I of the wouldn't adapt the actual whatever. panel drops do. that I've collected. I think that it they were in fact suggested uh, by Nick, if that's who I remember oh, correctly. Cool. So so yeah, and, and and sure enough, some of the some of the same drops that were suggested are on the soundboard. Did he suggest I don't have to adapt? Do you have I don't have to adapt? I don't have to get used to fart off, fart off, fart off. <laughs> 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 that line is so genuine. I know it's it really <laughs> encapsulates uh, the whole you know. Now, now how this, is this the sphere of Daryl? How whole, is Daryl not a Republican? I mean, that sounds like a conservative statement to me. And I think he probably started off you know in that boat. I mean, so- he sounds like a true statesman. <laughs> he sounded kind of like um, he sounded kind of like this guy. Hold on, yeah. Let's go ahead and talk about him. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, so, yes. yeah. So, who is this representative? Michael Grimm. He's a he's a younger looking guy. His name is Grimm. He uh, he's he's being interviewed at the at the Capitol by N one N Y one reporter Mike Scroto, uh, and he's he was asked a question that he wasn't prepared for, which is guess what. Which is what reporters are supposed to do. But he doesn't have to get used to... 
So now, here, this guy just looks like a gangster to me. I mean, he's from New York. He looks like a gangster. I mean, he's got the baggy pants and the bandanas and the gun on his hip and the big the big old boots. The big old boots like this guy is the laborer boots. The dangling <laughs> chains around his neck. The lapel pin. Let's let's go ahead and yeah, play I'm going this. back to my roots. You know how it is. Let's go ahead. Yeah, your Atlanta boot boots. <laughs> And just finally, before uh, we let you go, since we have you here, we haven't had a chance to kind of talk about some I'm of the... I'm not speaking about anything that's off topic. This is only about the president. Well, what about... Thank you. All right, so Congressman Michael Grimm does not want to talk about uh, some of the, the allegations uh, concerning his campaign finances. We wanted to get him on camera on that, but he, uh, as you saw, refused to talk about that. Back to you. Here he comes back. Why? Let me be clear to you. You have to do that to me again. It's really nice. So that was the uh, the video. It w wasn't very audio friendly. Uh, we'll go ahead and read what he actually said. Let me be clear to you. If you don't, if you ever do that to me again, I'll throw you off the far Yeah, and he's in the he's in the U.S. Capitol. There's like a balcony that and goes the, around. And the, and the interviewer is why it's a valid question. A little bit of inaudible. Inaudible. You're not man enough. You're not man enough enough. I'll break you in half like a boy. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> and by and by the way, they're standing right there at the balcony, and there's it's like what almost looks like three stories up. Um, wow, that would have made some good video. Could you imagine if Grim just just snapped like he probably does on his the prostitutes that he kills, uh, you know, every weekend when he's done with them? He just snaps and throws that you know poor reporter right off the. Look, look at this guy. I mean, yeah, I know. Almost, every, guy, crazy. I mean, almost every yeah. picture he's, he's, he's got very these, likely to say he's going to throw people off a balcony, but I don't know how often he actually does it. But he's got these, way, he's got these wide, cool. bugged out eyes. <laughs> it looks like, it looks like he's, he might have some veins in his neck. This is how you get ahead in New York. You got to kill your opponents. You got to throw them off the balcony. You got to break them in half like a boy. You disrespecting me. And <laughs> this is a great example of like um, the the people that are in the government they don't want accountability they don't want that video camera and so he's like you know he's basically telling that guy you know hey if you do this to me again i'm going to i'm going to f you up and right but usually they're not as uh, blunt as as this guy they do it behind doors they do they make sure that there's no camera involved oh i'm sure he thought that camera had been turned off i mean we we've heard some tales of some of our uh, uh officials government officials here, DPRK officials, who might have, you know, had a little scrape with uh, someone who was uh, running against him um, in a mayoral contest. Oh, oh yeah. might this be mayoral? Are you uh, referring to the Bradford Perry? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm referring... I, I know what you're referring to. I'm referring Errol to... Hutchinson? Uh, before our time. Yeah, uh, a I've mayoral contest story. before our time. And uh, yeah, and it's it's you have these mobster types who you know who feel that the that the the city is theirs. You mean like Rudy Giuliani versus Richard Daly? I'm not familiar with that one. I don't uh, know. Who, I don't even know who Daly is. Is uh, that was Daly that there? Is the Chicago guy? No, no. I'm talking about City of Keene. I'm talking about uh, our DPRK. Yeah, I'm talking Wait, about our mayor, uh, I don't our, our neck of the woods. Okay, I don't know. That's that's going back before my time too. <laughs> Yo, G, you remember the corrupt mayors? How old is G? Uh, G is probably about four now. Oh wow! Maybe even maybe even close to five. Um, and he's he's not getting any better. I mean, I'm real disappointed that uh, G has not been on the show in so long. I mean, he truly is the star. And the mascot, the I I don't he know is the brand I, I, of this whole franchise. I is think, your issue that you think the ego is going to eat him up? That's no, that's <laughs> that's exactly where I was going. He's it's gotten to a point where uh, he wants more money. He wants more. He wants more M and M's separated, green separated from the red M and M's. Uh, he wants his own his own changing room. Oh, so it's like it was like me on Shire TV. Exactly. You know, every every uh, show needs its princess. 
And what do they uh, call that? Prima Donna. Yeah. Prima Donna Supernova. Um, yeah, and, and I don't have time for it. You know, he's going to come in here. He's going to he's going to uh, put up a fuss, and knock cameras over, and uh, spill things. And no, I'm I'm not going to handle it. He's, he's right back to his box. Well, I was thinking the new show. Maybe it'll become monthly. The canine controversies, and you mm-hmm. get to rule the rule the roost, so to speak, for that period of time. And and we were talking about the climax of the first uh, numeral uno canine controversies, uh, dog poop. And if you, the whole show includes, you know, all kinds of, uh, you know, clips, clippets from here and there, mostly YouTube clippets of uh, dogs just doing their thing, and it's 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 entertaining. Uh, I'm already re- <laughs> <laughs> it's cable access. <laughs> it's, I'm 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 working on, uh, I'm working on another scene, another two three minute uh, clip of. Of G, it's called uh, Canine, or it's called Doggy Disciplines, uh, and I can't figure out what music to put to it. It's essentially him being obedient and you know sitting in his place and waiting for the food to be poured, and it's it's neat to see dogs who aren't like knocking you know, like things marching over. Marching songs like he's being obedient. Like you know, I was thinking some kind like of drill sergeant, you know, or maybe and... maybe some cadence, maybe you know. What about some, like, I don't know, but I've been told. What about Eskimo, some you know, unofficial DPRK stuff, like uh. The some reggae defend the empire and stuff you mean oh you mean oh, you take it straight to the to the north the yeah. north of korea you sure I or jamaican music, i don't know because he's not because he's not like oppressed i mean he's just being it's definitely very militaristic but it's not like his his he's proud to serve the dear leader at the end of the day yeah way. but it's not like his wife and children are locked up in the back room and if he doesn't behave i'm going to go in there i'm going to kick him in the mouth or even something worse. No, it's 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 a discipline like he loves it to death. He loves to 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 make me happy, and the way that he does that is he sits at attention and waits for his food to be poured before he gets in, to eat. Do you think that G considers himself to be owned or a self owner? No, I think he's a, he thinks of himself as a pack animal, and that I just happen to be the bigger the bigger wolf. You're the alpha. Maybe not even because sometimes he's he is annoying. So I guess he doesn't see me as like the alpha, but just the bigger wolf with the with the with the. <laughs> with the snappier jaws that might just do him harm if he doesn't behave. I don't know. I don't know how dogs really do it all. I just, I just know what works, and sometimes, he he doesn't need to be around. I just hope he's not being bullied by the cat. The cat bullies him for sure. You could you could look up like one of those marching uh, songs, like uh, "Stars and Stripes Forever" or whatever. Like you know, like when you when you march and like they have like the drum beat, like you know, doom, 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 doom. You know what I mean? There you go, something like that. Actually, that wouldn't be bad. And then when he and then when he goes to eat, I say I give him the command <laughs> right at the end of the drum roll. We can. We, I'll work on it. I'll figure something out. But uh, I got so much on my plate. Yeah, everybody's got plates these days. Many, many plates. I got plates just all over the place, just full of full of nonsense. Yeah, I think that's one of the the major problems in life. I mean, it's plates, tectonic plates, earthquakes. Well, it's not even the plates. It's you know, what do you do with all the plates, and how do you address all the plates, and how do you clean all the plates? You got to make sure you have a few that are good to go for whatever may pop up. Do you buy a maid? Does Rapture have a maid? Does someone, does someone clean his house for him? I don't think so. He was talking that the other week, and I was like, "What? What? Someone cleans his house for him?" He says, he, I, "His I, his house as in his like room and studio thing." That's the conclusion that I came to. There's someone that like cleans the common areas, uh-huh. but I don't know if he has someone that cleans or not. I don't, even, I don't even know if I could, you know, I could tolerate someone coming through my my living space and cleaning up after me. Now, I used to hire someone to clean my my living space, and it was very convenient. Yeah, but that was, but you were also helping someone out as well. Well, I mean, it, I I considered a very mutual exchange because, I mean, it's nice like you just leave your laundry and it's done, and you come home and your bathroom's all clean. Everything's folded and neat, and your bed's made up nice. And wow. 
I mean, it was really nice. I enjoyed it, but but and did you see that? It, so it was uh, an equal exchange. Whereas you were the money that you were paying out. I think uh, it's definitely worth it. Because I don't, I don't spend that much time cleaning up. Uh, you know, I, I, you make a lot more money than I do. So I mean, that probably makes sense in your boat. Whereas in mine, you know, those are those are lost hours there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it doesn't uh, it doesn't benefit me at all to to pay someone. Especially when you have kids, and that's the way to do it. By the way, it's just have kids and <laughs> make the kids do it. Put them to work, man. I, mean, I, I you... wish I wish this guy could you know really help out along. He's just all he does is eat and sleep and poop in the uh, snow. I mean, if you have something that you like, you know, my work, I spend a lot of hours working, and uh-huh. so and driving. Yeah, and so I don't want to. Uh, you know, I do now, but it's a pain to come home and have to do all that stuff myself. So. I mean, it is nice when I had that going, but now I don't, so. But, you know, I mean, it is what it is, so. Did you guys hear about the uh, torture music in Guantanamo? They were playing metal or Sesame Street. I, I thought that uh, President Shum shut down Guantanamo. Yeah, that's a promise. It's going to happen. <laughs> uh, six years ago, uh that's what the promise was. If he was elected, uh, dear leader would uh, go ahead and uh, remove that blight from the from the from the globe. Uh, the last time I heard about torture music, it was Metallica, which I don't. I don't oh, know. They were forcing people to download it, and then they would get sued. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so they were playing Metallica music in, in to the detainees, and uh, I guess they complained. And they stopped playing their music. Uh, there's another band. The band is called Skinny Puppy, which has been around for, for quite some time. I'm going to go ahead and... cheese band. I'm going to play one, some horrible music from, the, uh, from way back when. This is like German music. These guys, these are Canadians. It does sound German. Some German industrial. I think this is I think this is from way back when, probably early nineties. This seems like something you'd see in a German dance club scene in a movie. <laughs> so it turns out and these guys just found out that they've been playing their music to torture Guantanamo detainees for probably you know, probably the last decade. Uh, but instead of complaining, uh, asking the government to stop playing their music, uh, they sent them an invoice. And I, the article here doesn't uh, explain how much they asked for, or you know what kind of uh, compensation they're asking for at all. Uh, I, I don't know. How would you, if someone, if you found out that uh, the city of Keene was taking your videos and making a video like they did? Yeah, making a making a video of it and uh, and making money off of it. So they're you know, just. No, I actually had someone suggest to me that I take some sort of action against the city of Keene. Yeah, we'll stand right there. What happened? And I was like, no, man, that's totally against, like, everything I stand for. They can creatively censor and copyright and whatever. They can play all those Babylonian games, but I ain't going to play those Babylonian games. I put it out there, and you can play with it and edit it all you want. And then I can make fun of what you've played with and edit it all I want, too. I mean, I mean, but they weren't even making... I mean, so they're, there's the argument that if they're making money off of your art, you know... That's, I guess they're not making money off it. But they weren't even going. It. They weren't even taking it to that effect. They were actually using it. They were using your videos against you. They were taking their their your videos and using them against you in court. Well, they tried. That video was never admitted into court. Which was which was silly because you know there was there was no damning evidence anywhere. If anything, it made us you Robin Hooders look good. I I enjoyed watching those videos. I I thought that they really shine a positive light on the Robin Hooders. Mm-hmm. Um. So I don't know what if, what if they were taking your videos and, and using them to, to actually destroy people's lives by like keeping them up late into the into the late night, oh, keeping them using awake them to torture people at Cheshire County Jail. Yeah, um, man, I really wouldn't be happy about that because of the idea that you're trying to use someone's work to repel some to like annoy someone or repel someone to something like so actually, anything could be annoying. Like even your favorite song, if you were forced to listen to it a million times, it there becomes a point where it becomes torturous. So that's why I've, when I've been Robin Hooding and playing music out loud, I've always said to the parking enforcers, 
you know, let me know if you, you want me to change it because I think it is not cool to subject uh, sub, subject people to music that they don't want to hear. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about that in the second hour because mm. because you, you're one of those guys. <laughs> You're on, you're on my hit list, but I know that you would turn your crap off, and you also play music that I like to listen to. But there are some people out there who do not uh, well, play music that I like to listen I mean, to. The, the personal speaker system that I use isn't going to be blasting it into your ear from far away. It's uh, you know, for people within you know three to five feet, they're going to be able to hear it. Uh, not to <laughs> mention that you're in an outdoor environment, so it's yeah. not like an enclosed area. Yeah, when you're in a little tiny room, a little cubicle, mm-hmm. then it can be pretty pretty obnoxious. Um, so they, so you would, if someone was using your, your art to destroy other people's lives, that's, that's where you, that you, you would step up then. Well, what does it mean to step up besides speak out against it? What am I going to do? Speak like, up, you would speak out against go it. Go there and be like, I'm trying to destroy your hard drive so you can't do it anymore or something. With a screw, with a uh, drill and a hammer? Yeah, like the Edward Snowden file. Yeah, <laughs> just absolute silliness. And like, and aren't, don't those guys know that all that stuff has already been uploaded somewhere? Hopefully. No, it's, I, it's, I still it, haven't seen that. I saw like the, the a picture of it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's I probably in multiple, uh, multiple places in the cloud. Um safe and sound you know where no one could get to it yeah, and, here, and here they are trying to destroy it with you know physical evidence and that, that the old school way i mean uh, technology has changed man did these, did these guys even know what where's steve when you need him steve what's the cloud and maybe they were just thinking that snowden didn't do his a good job he was just lazy and had one copy of the the files i mean if he did that, he use a, you know, he's an idiot. Yes, so. absolutely. <laughs> I think the government's gonna pay Skinny Puppy. They'll probably want to settle with them privately. Be like, all right, yeah, we probably violated those stupid copyright laws that we claim to uphold. Well, I hope that if they do make money, and it was even if it was a private transaction, I hope that they, of course, there'll probably be some disclaimer where they're not able to divulge uh, what yeah. money, what monies they made off it. But I hope that the, I don't know. It's really disgusting because if you think of all the uses of someone's art that you can have, um, what's like the worst thing that you can do to someone else's art than use it to torture someone else? Like, is is there anything? I mean, like, I guess taking it and physically assaulting someone with it, like burning DVDs and attacking them, maybe. But I mean, taking taking it. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> oh well, that that was if anything should be against the law, intellectual property wise. It should be torturing people with other people's artwork. I don't know, man. That that uh, uh, particular song from Skinny Puppy was uh, not uh, not one that I cared much for. The the German uh, retro yeah, I don't hang industrial out in German dance clubs. So. Um, I do, however, like this one. It's called Protest. Uh, we're going to uh, play it for you uh, for the break song. Um, and there's the dog with <laughs> the tail right into the mic. <laughs> You the ready dog to get your, your settlement check? The dog's, dog's going to get slapped down. Guys, uh, we're going to take a break and leave you with the Skinny Puppy protest. We will see you in a little bit. Hey, welcome back to Black Sheep Rising Hour 2. And uh, before we left you, we were talking about earbuds. I got a bone to pick with this guy over here, old Mr. Garrett. Garrett is one of these younger one of these younger generation types, generation X or whatever. What generation are you, Garrett? Is it X or Y? I don't even know, man. Is I've heard it Y? I don't know. Maybe it's Z. Millennial. By, when when is it going to be Z? Is, oh, is that when the zombies attack? I think, it's, I think attack? it's millennial. I don't know. I, if I, I think I'm, cut with I'm Generation Y, so I imagine you're Generation Y. I don't know what it is, but I notice a lot of the younger guys uh, are walking around downtown, or at work, or wherever, or in their cars, or just you know, or in, or in the store, you know, listening to their music uh, from their Android devices or iPod iphone devices uh, are you sure that's a new thing because i think i recall like seeing 
videos like with people with the ghetto blasters like walking you're around. absolutely correct yeah it's from the spike lee movie you're, you're absolutely correct i don't th- i don't think that's a new thing no no it's not a new thing it's but it's a thing that had kind of died out it's kind of been gone for a little while um the cops killed the guy who had the speaker system and do the right thing they choked him to death oh really yeah that's a you know that movie do the right thing spike lee there's this guy, I think his name was like Boombox or something. Yeah, and there's I a didn't. riot and the cops show up and they just grab him and like choke him to death. And everyone's like, man, that's bull. I didn't see that oh, one. Oh, gee, got the ice cream. <laughs> hey, is he, is, did he get a whole wrapper? Yeah. Yeah, don't look at that. Can, can you go grab that? Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Eat the wrapper. Hold on one second. <laughs> okay, I guess uh, interlude. <laughs> G found a, something to eat. And Conan has to go deal with it. Maybe we can play some. Um, oh man, it's a good thing there's no microphone in there. <laughs> Would have had to have creatively censored that from Cheshire TV. I don't think you uh, closed the door, Conan. It's all right. It's Did closed you get enough. The rapper? Yeah, I got it. Spewing their gangster garbage. Essentially, what has happened here is this is when Graham, the grandma and granddad visit the family, and they just they you know, throw their gifts onto the grandchildren and just spoil the shit out of them. Essentially, Uncle James and, and Garrett here are, have, have moved into that grandma-granddad position and are spoiling the hell out of my dog. What the hell, man? He likes ice cream and peanuts. He's not allowed to pick wrappers up. He is completely forbidden from, from, from taking that route. I, I don't think so because he knew exactly how to, like, carry it. and you know. No, he, no he's, he's very graceful. Yeah, he, but he, he knew would, what he was doing. Yeah, but he would have never done it in my presence unless he thought that he was I think he thought he'd get away with it. I mean He thought. And he got his he almost got his butt handed to him, but he got away faster than I can get to him. But the rapper is no more. Um anyways, see you young guys, man. God. Wearing your ear not wearing your earbuds, playing your music out loud, and spoiling my damn dog. I just don't even understand. I it. think you're getting old, Conan. I think that's, that's the problem. Oh, God. Yeah, I hope you're not just naturally coming to resent the younger people for the sake of the being young. No, it's just, this is something that's always bothered me. There, there. Everyone has their pet peeves, and one of the one of the ones that I have is uh, being forced to listen to other people's music, even if it's music that I like. Uh, the problem is if it's coming from a little tiny speaker. It. Um, the problem if it comes from a little tiny speaker, it doesn't have the bass necessary to 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 do what it's supposed to do it sounds real tinny i recommend these uh speakers i just got on amazon that are rechargeable Mm -hmm. and they have a bass resonator that you can open up and it sounds pretty good yeah don't tell anyone about that (laughs) you probably do you own one i own two (laughs) (laughs) um so what so anyways at work you know we and i've and i've talked about this on the show previously um there, it started with young, young lady, who was just hired just just a little while ago, and she started playing her her girl pop. Of course, the thing is, is she was never anywhere near me. She's on the other side of the store, and so I would never encounter it. The problem is, is that everyone saw what she was doing, and they came to the conclusion that hey, I don't have to wear my earbuds anymore. They, you know, I got these this cable that you know is you know, hanging all over the place and catching on things. Why would I do that? And not to mention, my music is cool. Everyone loves my music. And so before you know it, there's a half dozen of these Four playing their music, you know, in every aisle. There's, you know, you walk, you walk through the store and everywhere, every, you know, 10, 20 feet, you hear another, so- is another this song. Is while there's customers afoot? This is not when there's customers. This is after hours. Uh, so the store is ever, empty. You think there would ever be going on while there's customers afoot? No. That that would be a, a big old no no, and uh, someone would put their foot down. You you can't even listen to music at all when customers are around. Well, no, uh, no, and you can't have earbuds either. Now we get away with it. the the eleven o'clockers when we go in there, or the ten o'clockers. Store closes at eleven. There's that one hour there. I just go ahead and put my my earbuds in, and by then there's hardly anyone in the store anyways. And if and the people who are in the store are the late night type vampire people who don't care anyways. So none of the management is there. Nobody asked for assistance late at night. No, not really. Uh, yeah, some some people were looking for beer beer pong, um, pong balls the other mm-hmm. night, and I didn't know where they were at because they're one of those special items that are hanging on a on a they're, corner somewhere. They're in sporting goods. You can't. You I said. Normal. I said. I said toys, sporting goods. Those are the only places they would be. Like college dorm but accessories. But there is a special 
There's a special. There's uh, like a special brand. No, there's a little sidekick thing that hangs on the corner, and it's in foods. I think it's on the beer and wine aisle, which makes sense. Hmm. So yes, they do exist, but and I just found that out the other night, two weeks ago, when the when the people asked me that, I didn't know where they're at. So the, yeah, those things those things tend to happen. So anyways, everyone's listening to music. It's obnoxious. Some music is not bad. If someone's listening to some reggae, like this guy over here, you know, it's, it's probably not going to be that big of a deal. But if someone's listening to this nasty, uh, crappy uh, rap stuff all night, or some country, the nasty, crappy rap, like rap that was made within five. No, years. not some cool, not some cool rap. Like we played, like the uh, the legend of or this the tribe well, called Quest. Tri- tribe called Quest. Um, no, I mean that's that stuff's all right. It's cool. It's smooth. But this. This obnoxious Eminem crap. I can listen to Eminem like once, but I can't listen to a whole album straight on hour after hour. Yeah, I could see that. I'm not the biggest fan. Can't you just put as, in your as, own? Especially earbuds? when, especially when, oh, and that's the thing. So now, if I'm wearing, my, here, here's the thing: if I'm wearing my earbuds, playing my own music or audiobooks, and the music the, that you're playing from three or four aisles down is so loud that I can hear it over top of my music, you're playing your music too fucking loud. Over the you're, you've, you've, you've crossed the line and it's got to end. So here, what do I do? I put up with it. I get a little upset and I go and I confront the people. And I've talked to more than one person. Uh, last week, I confronted one of the one of the individuals who I've never liked. He's a he is a scumbag. Uh, he's a he's a shamster and a, uh, a a slacker and thug. And I've never liked him. Uh, but I went and told him, I said, Hey, look, the first thing I asked him, I said, Hey, look, don't you, don't you own some, and this is my exact, this is the exact conversation. Don't you own some earbuds? You know, you know, I don't own any earbuds. I'm like, well, you do, you do realize that we sell them. we have, you know, a good dozen earbuds over there in electronics. You know, once you on the next break, go and get you some earbuds. The cheapest ones are like three bucks. He's like, no, I'm not gonna. <laughs> so <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm like, well, your music is kind of obnoxious. I mean, you, I mean, do you really think that people around you, you know, want to listen to that? It's like, well, I don't care. All right, well, that did it. So then here, here I am trying not to be the man, trying not to, you know, go and tattle on people. I just, I had to go talk to the the uh, the manager at the time and let them know. I actually asked him, it's like, look, uh, is this, you know, what's the policy on people playing music out loud? It's like, well, it's not allowed. I'm like, well, you do. And I, and I said that, and you can hear music from every corner of the, the <laughs> building. I'm like, well, you do realize people, you know, are breaking that policy, and some people are having to put up with it. So she went around. This is one of the newer managers, and she's, uh, turns out she's not very. Um, uh, Confrontational? Yeah, exactly. She doesn't have, she doesn't have a, a boot to stand on. And so she went and told this guy probably about three times that night to turn his music off. And as soon as she would, as soon as he would walk out, as soon as she would walk off, he would just turn it right back on. I mean, this is how evil this guy is. The guy reminds me a lot of uh, the guy who chased your ass down that one day. Hobbs? Was it, yeah, what is his name? My major complaint with him was his loud music. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought your major complaint with him was that he was probably 100 pounds heavier than you, and if he had gotten right. his hands on you. I wouldn't hold that against someone for being heavier than me, but... Heavier as in heavier as a Goliath, not like a fatty or anything. I mean, he, but anyways, this guy chased you down... He, he thinks with his fists. That's that's his uh, his main foot that he stands on. The guy that I'm talking about at work, they, I, they're probably buddies. They might even be related. They're probably cousins. Well, I mean, what you're talking about, it sounds like someone that just likes getting under other skin or doesn't mind it. But are you are you suggesting there's any sort of violent streak in this person or a suggestion of violent behavior? Oh yeah, because so, because later on, after he found out that I was one that told on him. Uh, it, it, it got, it got violent as in, uh, the precipice. We were both on the precipice and if there weren't cameras on us, it would have, it would have gone to fists. Oh, well, I know somebody who will attack you even if you have a camera pointed at them. So. Well, they, it, this, this would have gotten both of us fired. I think both of us realized, I'm glad that he was conscious of the fact cause I don't think that Hobbs guy would have even cared. He would have, and he would have lost his job like that. And I probably would have as well. Because I would have defended myself, and it probably would have come back to me that I was the one that instigated it or something. I don't know. So you're telling me that a manager told him to like turn his music down, and he just turned it back up? Turn it off, or go get earbuds. And yeah, as soon as she walked out of the door, 
and away from the area, he turned it right back on. And it and like how how was he not like written up or fired or something? I don't know. See, when I put this in the show notes, it was a week ago when all this all this went down, and I was pretty upset when I wrote it down. Uh, I only saw him one day this week, and he had guess what? He had the big old uh, you know earphones, not earbuds, big old pink earphones. Um, and uh, we kind of kept away from each other the entire night. Um, so I don't I don't know what what direction that's going. And before I got to work, they actually had their 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 nightly meeting, and the the boss that I do like, who is able to who is confrontational. She actually told everyone in the meeting, no more music out loud, earbuds only, you know, be, be mindful of everyone's, everyone's workspace. So I missed that. I don't know exa- exactly what was said, but uh, it, it, a lot of people, a lot of the people who were, who were uh, you know, the, the big uh, instigators. Music, music listening instigators were uh, put in their place, I guess. So, and until some new, until a new manager leaves and a new, or an old old manager leaves and a new one comes in, and and new employees. I mean, I I, I don't think this is going to be a problem that's going to come up anymore. Now, Ho- do hopefully, you, do you have to work with this guy on a on anything, or you just no, uh, n- not really. And it's already been pretty much laid down that I'm not going to work with him. We work together in the bike department. <laughs> we are what? No, what? No. Um, <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna steer clear of each other. Um, it's it could be dangerous if we were put in the same area. Dangerous, dangerous is and I don't want to lose my job. Thank you very much. Well, I know that if people do want to play music while they work, they can get jobs either as uh, parking enforcers for the city of Keene, because mm-hmm. uh, one of the parking enforcers has been playing music recently, which I think is pretty cool. And uh, and and news news from the radio. Or also, you can get a job as a Robin Hooder and play music as you walk around filling meters. So they just—it's just kind of a back and forth between you guys. So, so you're playing. So, do you think that the fact that you said that Jane is playing Rob Zombie, and here you are playing some smooth reggae, do you think there's a, you know, they think there's a little back and forth going on there? Like she's trying to out, she's trying to, you know, outshine your music in a way. Well, I think it might have just came on the radio. I don't know to what extent. Oh, so she's not listening to like a whole album of Rob Zombie. She's just yeah. listening to the radio. I have an MP3 player with me so I can pick the tunes. But I think what I heard the other day was a uh, radio that was being played mm. for the people, which I think is great. You've taken some flack before for uh, some of your videos. People complain about the loud music. Yeah, they'll be like, "We're neighbors. We don't like loud music or something." Well, it's not even that. It's I think the the camera is close to the sound source, so it sounds yes. like really loud, even though it's not that That's loud. That's true. I've yeah. clipped the speakers to the camera before, so they're just dangling on the side uh, of it. Now, one course. of my favorite moments of the the whole Robin Hood trial is my Sharona. Yeah, Garrett plays his video in court, and it's uh. That it was, was just like my Sharona blaring out. It is so <laughs> funny. I don't know if you you seen. That. I I explained that to Daryl. I says he's not playing the music that loud. It's just the fact that it's right up next to his camera, and it's just picking it all up. Um, and you're moving. You're not standing in the same place. And it's outside. You know. You know the wind is blowing and the the sun is shining. Weather is sweet. I mean, you're, when you're locked in a in a small room with somebody, that that can be. Uh, I mean, I tend to agree with you. It's it is like really annoying, like. But I mean, but it, like if someone's driving around like at three in the morning, you know, it is annoying. Yeah. And it's just it pisses me off too, and you know, like, um, you know, I've done things that piss my coworkers off. Like for a while, I had like a like a squishy ball, and I would throw it against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, I'd be I'd be in my office, and uh, pretty much exactly. <laughs> and so I have a I have a job where uh, you know I'm an accountant, so I'm I'm crunching numbers a lot, and uh, I, I have to think. So you know, I would I'd throw this ball up, or I'd be like squishing it, and every now and then I'd take a break and I'd be throwing it against the wall and. Finally, one day, this uh, lady I work with was like, "You know, can you not do that anymore?" So, I mean, but did you ever think about it before that? Uh, no, I didn't think it was. I, I think I think it's very fair to say that a lot of people who do these things have never thought about it before. It's just so, it's natural to them. 
you know, they, they live in loud environments, you know, mm-hmm. or they, or they live alone or something. And they just, they just don't notice how much noise they make until someone, and the thing is that people don't want to be confrontational because what, what, yeah, what like happens, what happens when you're confrontational? You have exactly what happened last week. I go mm-hmm. and talk to this guy and the guy's told me to fuck myself. And it's like, there, well, there's some guy, he like lives below me in, in my apartment building and he, I think he's like a musician. He, I hear him singing. I hear him uh, like playing instruments. Mm-hmm. And he, he never does it like really loud, but you know he'll be rocking out like three o'clock in the morning. No, not even three o'clock. Like nine o'clock or something. And it's not terrible or anything like in the morning, but it, you know it is. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of annoying, and I, I don't want to say anything because I know it's like his passion, you know. So I don't. I never have, and it's not annoying enough where I would say something, but. What if you just say something like, oh, you sound good, or whatever? Um, or maybe like he is good. I mean, I've heard him. him. But then he'll be conscious of the fact that you're hearing it. So. Hmm. That's true. I don't know. It's Then you're curtailing. Because I guess you can always leave a note in his box. I mean, I, I guess it, it kind of balances out, because I'm probably like walking around. He probably hears me on the ceiling. Yeah. So there's nothing I can do about that. How dare that. you, James? <laughs> well, you, uh, you always do what I do and just live out in the woods or not. And, not this is about as woods as you can get in Keene, but I mean, there's no way I can hear anything my my neighbors are doing. I can't hear them. Uh, very few cars drive by. Yeah, but it's kind of nice too to live like around people. Uh, yeah, if you want to, yeah, if you want, if you like interacting with people, or if you like being able to walk to you know the convenience store or something. Or what? What's funny is like I I kind of live close to downtown and I always have like oh I'm gonna bike and walk and then I never do so <laughs> I always wonder like why am I paying this extra money you know what I mean but I, you know I live in a very cheap locations so it's not really a real thing but you can walk to every you can walk to court you can go walk to Robin Hood yeah that's true probably got some little convenience stores around there you can shop at or do you no that's one thing that's lacking there I definitely could. Hit up a convenience store, but I yeah, can definitely. Yeah, if you live like like a little news. further north and over and west, you can I guess go to Beaver the, Street. Is the, kind yeah, of Beaver closest. Street. Yeah, but where you're at is just just maybe Jake's just five rooms. Star. Maybe yeah, you should start true. something. You can call it James um, James's Wares. James Six Star. <laughs> Six Star. <laughs> you can sell milk and cigarettes, and other and chips and Bitcoin and, oh, and, and ramen. Sell I can Bitcoin. I can uh, sell FPP T-shirts. Absolutely. Yes, I, like I can how, have I like the F P T F F. There could be a little P-P- black box where the image that Dave Ridley shot was F P P dot G G. Now, one time I was out Robin Hooding and <clears throat> I told the parking enforcer about F P P newspaper, and I'm like, "Oh, it's right here!" And I pointed at the newsstand, <laughs> and I'm like, "It's free. You can take one." And they're like, "No, I'm all set." Like they won't even read F P P. Like I don't know what's wrong with them. Do you think it has anything to do with um? You know, it's the nuts in the mouth. The fact that Daryl is the uh, <laughs> behind yeah, all like, that. Oh, I heard what that person had to say about Pumpkin Fest. I'm all set. Yeah, he he wasn't. Uh, he didn't have anything good to say about Pumpkin Fest. So we've gonna have no to just comment. not put up with his paper at all. You should. Uh, you should get some really nice like wrestling videos and. I don't know if you know Daryl likes wrestling. Did you know? Does that? he? I didn't know that. Oh yeah, he's into it. He li- his, his thing. Do you, do, you, do you think? Do you think if I took all right, some wrestling videos and take the head of that girl he likes off of Game of Thrones, Daenerys? Oh man, he and would put like, the heads on the re- on the wrestlers. That would be great. He, he would have to excuse himself. Oh, and every time he wants to play his Game of Thrones song, which sounds like this, I do something sneaky, and I switch it with this. Wiener, 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 wiener. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Daryl. <laughs> I've flipped him, so now next time he tries to play the song, that's going to show up. Oh, if he pushes this? If he pushes, yeah, exactly. Great. <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, we'll uh, be, be ready for that surprise next week on episode uh, 39. Uh, if you heard this, you'll, you'll know that it's coming. 
because Daryl's going to push the Game of Thrones button. Oh man! But yeah, so he's uh, so he likes wrestling. He likes Game of Thrones. Um, what do you, what do you, wrestling. What do you su- what do you suggest I do to to piss him off? To just to just drive the nail even deeper. There's well, nothing you can do associated off, with wrestling that's going to anger him because he likes it. He'll be like, "Oh yeah, that's." My if favorite. I take his favorite girlfriend and put her head all over his wrestlers. Well, would be I, like, I this got looks the, like something James or Garrett would do. I got the perfect <laughs> thing for you. So last a few days ago, he's watching wrestling, and uh, like this uh, investor comes out, quote unquote, this investor. <laughs> <laughs> like they're well, gonna hello, Mister Fancy. <laughs> like they're gonna buy the wrestling league or something. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but anyway, you should have the investor walk out. And it should be that chick. Was he yelling? <laughs> Was he yelling at the screen when this happened? No, he's like MVP or oh, I don't know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> the secret's out. <laughs> I wouldn't even uh, tell him. I'd be like, I got this video, Daryl, and then just play it. And then <laughs> this video is sent to us anonymously, like that phone message that was left for Black Sheep Rising. What are you saying? Are you saying that we got a voicemail last week? Oh, yeah, didn't you mention something about that earlier? Yeah, We did get a voicemail. Uh, I've been asking for one for pretty much the last, I don't know, 10 episodes or something. Episodes, and, and someone finally uh, sent one in, but they didn't even send it with their own voice. They <laughs> used one of those uh, uh, dockings. What's the guy in the wheelchair? What Hawking? <laughs> yeah, Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking, uh, voice modulator type things. It could have been Stephen Hawking that called in. I know, it could have been. Uh, we don't know if it's his real voice or not. Don't know. Let's go ahead and play this up because this is, um, I don't know, this is kind of entertaining. I, I got a kick out of it. Of course, when I I got the message, is the way Google Voice works is that you will you get an email and you can actually read the text and you can see, <laughs> I think all the words in black are the ones that are most definitely accurate. Whereas the gray ones are, you know... Blank like, sheet like rising. blank sheet rising, yeah, exactly. So that the Google wasn't sure. Uh, and the other thing is, it leaves all the cuss words out. So all I got to see was this: "You suck, you suck, you suck. You're so <laughs> obscene. I hope you, I hope you die in hell." Uh, and it left all the cuss words out, so you didn't realize how fun it really is. Uh, until this, you get the profanity, it's not until fun. you actually hit the play button. And here we go. Rising is horrible. Not for children. You guys suck. Conan. Black sheep rising is horrible. You guys suck. Four dollars, I'll go fart. I started watching and now I don't know how to make it stop. <laughs> Can you come over to my house and shut the sh- So obviously, uh, this particular uh, caller is not a, not appreciative of the uh, the obscenities that we throw left and right on the show. They Espe- said they couldn't stop watching. I they're having a hard time turning it off. I mean, it's you know, I, I, it, it almost, it's almost like they're conflicted in their in their views and whether they are uh, fans or they just want to stab sharp. Uh, uh, you know, screwdrivers into their temples to end, to end the pain. It Clearly could be like someone like Running Wolf Kenpo. Ah, <laughs> we don't know who it is. Well, I know where this. I know where this person is History coming from. Um, I don't know who it is. Uh, but that does, Field. That's a stoner reference. Yeah, that doesn't. Bakersfield. That doesn't mean anything because you know here's uh, Daryl's phone number. And say of course, it on the air. Say it on the air. And of course, here's my phone number. Say it and on you the can air. see say that nothing is nothing is aligning up. It's all that we're all over the place now these days. You know, you can get numbers anywhere now. I should get a number from India and see how that works. Actually, I don't know how that would work. But yeah, uh, appreciate the call. Uh, hey, uh, like I said, positive, negative. I don't care. I think it's fun. Be creative. Uh, use your um, Stephen Hawking's voice modulator if you have to to hide your identity. Have you heard the MC Hawking, the rap? Uh uh-uh. uh. Oh, they should play that in Walmart. You should give your friend the CD from MC Hawking. Is that MC Hawking versus uh, Tesla? No, it's not rap, that. Rap battles? No, I'm, it's none of that garbage. It's an actual. Oh, you don't like those? There's like one or two that are fun. Do you not like the rap battles because Daryl loves them so much? <laughs> <laughs> I think that could be that could be it. 
<laughs> I think I didn't like them before I knew Daryl liked them at all. Wow. Well, what's funny is uh, some Daryl will love something and then Garrett will hate it and vice versa. Like uh, Family Guy. Like Daryl loves Family Guy and then Garrett's like, you know, uh, I don't deal with this Family Guy what about nonsense. What about Futurama? Yeah. I'm not into Futurama. What either. about South Park? Oh, South Park's great. Okay, so Daryl doesn't like South Park. Yeah, I think Daryl's like, no, I don't have to adapt to Yeah, well, South Park, South Park is an actual libertarian show, and then Futurama and Family Guy are mainstream garbage. I mean, but the thing is, is that I, but the thing is, I am a uh, South Park fan. Yeah, South Park is intellectual and has a Do message you, and a deeper meaning and all the good stuff you look I, for. I think in you show. have to think more with the show like South Park. I, uh,. As co- opposed to co- like Family Guy, oh, yeah, family, family Guy, guy is, because of the, the jokes are just lowest yeah, common denominator. It's like almost and it's, retarded. And Thir- like thirty seconds, yeah, thirty seconds, and then it's a new manatee created three line thing about like you remember the time X Y Z, and then flashback X Y Z. You remember the time A B C, flashback A B C. And for those who didn't catch that one about the manatee generated, the uh, South Park boys discovered that in fact. The Family Guy episodes were all created by manatees. Only if there's no censorship. If and you censor the manatees, they'll stop working. That's right. You got to keep them happy. I don't and think they're no, all. There, there is nothing worse than an unhappy manatee who just floats there and doesn't do anything. Those are all the manatees Those that are. are right family the guys, manatees so. that are floating around out there in the wild. They're all censored manatees. That's why they do what they do. They're really smart, genius. Manatees are all kept in Los Angeles or wherever they do the filming of uh, Family Guy. Yeah, down in Florida, mm-hmm. super genius bastards that would go swim with them and touch them. And Four dollars. It's not nice. Leave the manatees alone. Leave them alone. You. Oh, yeah. Four dollars. No, but uh, <laughs> I have swam with them and and uh, been able to uh, touch them. Big Don't old. They not really like that. They they're stupid. They're big stupid pigs, <laughs> floating pigs. They don't realize what's going on. Yo, gee, you hearing this? Now it's now it's the species here. now it's the people who are actually like getting on them and like riding them. Yeah, holding onto the fins. Yeah, that's that's messed up. But just going there, I mean, I'm sure you've okay, seen the. I'm, I'm sure you've seen the thing. divers who are, you know, swimming with the whales and stuff. It's, it was the whales just, are a lot bigger than manatees. Then yeah, kind of manatees, dude. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> And when you're like a ten year old kid swimming with some manatees, I mean, friggin' ton like tonnage, they're they're pretty big compared to a little kid. Sure. That's and that's the way I that, that I remember them. I know that they're not actually that big. But oh, speaking of the children, pizza party. Who's gonna fund it? You? Official DPRK, the People's Fund. Do you think that they'll actually uh put in some monies for uh a pizza party on that what Saturday? What is better for kids than a pizza party? There aren't going to be any kids uh, there. You know, some... The kids are watching Saturday morning cartoons eating, eating Cheerios, man. They're not going to be watching this, going to this crap. This is going to be horrible, man. On it's gonna, any it's gonna, it's day gonna take of all the morning. week of my childhood, I would have opted for no, pizza no, but over it's, Cheerios it's at, in a second. It's at the school. Like, some great nations like Cuba give their children candy at school, and it's like, they'll have a picture of, uh, well, I guess this is old now, but they had like a picture of Fidel... Fidel. Or Castro, and he's like, "Oh, Castro is giving you the candy. So they could do the same thing with DPRK, like right, Prince you know, John's face. Yeah, Prince pizza. John's hooking you up with this uh, pizza party. And again, for those not aware, we're talking about the upcoming uh, school board pizza party second session, where everyone will be. Part on, part on, part on. Yeah, we'll talk about all the yeah. warrants. Uh, the warrants are going to be added to the ballot. I think we should order delivery." While we're there, I it's agree. it's not really it's clear uh, what can be done to the warrants that I added. Can whether, you bring what, like snacks with you? Whether they can be amended or not. Bring your laptop. Get some free Wi-Fi. I need like, like play, subsidence. Play some Bejeweled. We should do the. Brown I like Amici's. Bring you some. Bring you some. Mc- Wasn't Amici's in favor of higher like school taxes? Bring you some Whack Arnold's. I'm in favor Cut of higher like Amici's pizza. <laughs> Guys, I'm not even going to deal with you. <laughs> I'm just not even gonna, not even gonna listen to you guys. Um, no, I mean it's it's going to be a horrible uh, event. I'm going to have to to come home from work after being up all friggin' night working uh, to come sit in a in a room and listen to this crap for many many hours because it's not going to go down easy. It's going to be people getting up there talking about how they need the money. The school needs the money. The kids need this money. You know, if you if you don't 
you know, raise the uh, the budget by this per- this amount, then you hate kids. Well, first of all, and then, I and mean, then, and then my warrants are going to get up there, and they're going to be all like, "How can you even suggest that we reduce the budget by, you know, one or five percent?" You know, I mean, what what kind of warmonger hating children bastard are you? And uh, I mean, and, and and like I said, I don't know what they can actually do. I don't know if they can actually amend the actual wording, or they can uh, they can amend the the number value. That I'm to trying to decrease the budget the slices by slices of pizza per child. This, this is this is a first this is a first time thing. I don't I don't uh, we don't we don't know what's going to happen. I don't I know mean, about any of that stuff, but maybe maybe we should uh, you should propose like you know these cuts. Let's not cut the uh, instructional programs. We we should cut out all the administrators who. No, that's that's who actually, the hell even knows what they do. I don't know. That's in the wording. That's in the actual warrant that the monies cannot come from instructional programs. So half of the Thirty thirty million dollars goes to instructional. The other thirty million. What the? F- what the, f- the other thirty million goes to whatever else: building, uh, administrators, bus drivers, you know, uh, people who cut the grass. That sounds like more than enough to have a dope pizza party on. Now, now in 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 the private sector, you know, kind of my experience is like most organizations, like like a ten percent overhead would be a lot. Mm-hmm. You're basically just saying, "Oh, we have a hundred percent overhead." That's and it's, ridiculous. But, but it's all right because that's that's the way government handles its business. You've got to have more government to create more government, and you know they can't be ten percent of what's actually uh, the actual labor that's being done. Well, I think fifty percent like is I, fair. You know, my my well, labor—that's that's what they're getting. They're getting fit. They're getting the fit. It's fifty fifty. Well, because, I mean, when we talk about the pizza party, it's like, how many pizzas should each child get? That's and I think it is 50-50, not 100. You're right. Half of the pizza is good. I want four pieces, and usually there's eight slices. So, four pieces per child is Well, I mean, how would, how would Bernanke cut that pizza up? In half. But Six slices or eight. But that wouldn't be equal, because there's three of us. Oh, I've heard that before. There should be uh, nine. Is it nine slices of pizza or twelve? I, I don't. I don't understand. Oh, I how, how could you even cut the pizza with nine? You have to use a knife. You couldn't use like a. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't be able to do. No, you wouldn't be able to do uh, halves all the way across. You would have to be. You would have to measure you it out. You Couldn't even pick up a pizza. You would cutter. have to. You would yeah, have to, I mean, unless you're like Daryl, you can. Well, you, you know, cut a knife. you would have to get your protractor out. And yeah, is that on the soundboard? And it, that's. <laughs> I don't have that one. The AD. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the I don't have the one with the cutting pizza. I don't even remember which episode that was from. Wait, uh, he talks about cutting a pizza. He talks about cutting a steak. He cannot pick up a knife to yeah. cut a, a steak. pizza. <laughs> <laughs> to cut a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I do remember the conversation about the pizza, and I don't remember what brought it up. But yeah, we would need a special protractor to cut the pizza into nine pieces. The Ber- times Ber- I Bernanke remember style. pizza parties when I was a child, it's like when we were in Little League and we won the, the cup and other instances that were joyous like that, like the end of the school year, there'd be a pizza party. So I think it's time. These kids have had enough of this crap. We hear how many of them are using drugs in high school. Would that be the case if more kids had great things that weren't drugs before that? Mm-hmm. I, you know. Dude, I don't know. All I can remember is my, my days in high school. You know, everyone, every one of my fr- friends did drugs. They drank, they smoked weed, some of them did other things, but most of them just smoked weed and drank, they went to parties, they skipped school, they did the whole nine. I mean, was was your school experience, and, and, I, and I dropped that early, so I didn't even experience like- Oh, when I was in I high even, school, I was I didn't, like, I didn't even experience bad, 11th and 12th alcohol. grade, which is when it was really going down. I mean, what were your experiences like? I, I mean, I was pretty straight at Arrow in high school, so- But did you ever rub shoulders with the guys that I'm talking about? Oh sure. yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then, like in college, I uh, kind of went off the deep end, I guess, for a little bit. And by the way, when I did go to college, or when I did go- get into the military, guess what? I didn't do. I didn't go off the deep end because I'd been doing this for so many years previous that it's like you know, it wasn't taboo to me anymore. When longer. you turned twenty-one, mm-hmm. you stopped drinking. I might have taken a break, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's and that's usually the way that works. I mean, a lot of these kids do what they do. Because it's forbidden, and it's you know they they, they it's, it's not allowed, and they're gonna and they are they're just going to be rebels. So if the last thing you want to do is tell your kids they shouldn't do something, or at least play Jedi mind tricks with them, and if you do want them to do something, tell them not to do it. Like if you don't want your kid to be a, no, uh, we just need more funding. 
This is spin more. We need in. we need more training. We need more we need more uh, psychology advisors to train our kids in the ways of uh, uh, abstinence, drug abstinence, and that'll 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 clear it all. We up, need right? like another no. high school counselor to because the last thing you'd want the last thing you'd want to do is to tell the parents that they need to get their act together and actually tell their kids. That there's some slacker dumbasses and they need to get their act together. You know, it's kind of funny uh, if you think about it. Um, like when you're growing up, you spend, if you go to public school, you spend, or even private school, uh, so much time of your life in this institution. And like I would argue that it had, more, it shapes you more than your, even your own parents. Oh, your, oh yeah, yeah, members. yeah, yeah. I would say that you spend more time. More, more like waking hours. You don't hours. spend eight hours a day with your parents. I mean, that's very unusual. No, when you get home from school, you don't go hang out with your parents. You go play video games or you go watch movies. Or you go play at your friend's house. So it's kind of funny. Like the um, the state uh, that the average person is in is almost like a direct cause of how crap the schools are. But I would I would say that the the schools the school system, uh, especially the urban schools, are a direct cause of the families breaking apart and separating. Now, sometimes, you know, if you, if you grew out in the woods like I did, where you saw your parents all the time, and especially if your parents work at home, like if they were farmers or something, you know, I saw my, my dad was always around, my mom was always around, and so uh, there, was, there was never this, this, this time when I was left alone, on my own, doing my own thing, except when I was at school, or when I was traveling to and from school, and I, of course... Uh, traveled on bicycle and it was quite a distance, eight miles. So that was that was uh, my cool. only really free time, and I and I got out a lot too. I mean, I took off. I would go I would go marching around the the countryside. Yeah, you go on marches, support the people. Marches like to support myself, like to get uh, like to get away from the people. I'm telling you, in like Florida, go hide out in the woods. Some marches for the people. I'm I'm saying like you know thousands strong. So I don't know why you wouldn't. Get I don't I don't that. remember that particular uh, which one which one was that because they have marches all the time. Oh yeah, well there's lots of them. So no, I wasn't. I wasn't a hundred or a thousand or a million million man strong. I was just me. Sometimes I would. Sometimes I would drag one of my buddies along with me. But usually we were marching around in the in the swamps, or going to get in a canoe. And it's because you don't want to hear El Pueblo Nido. Like when I was marching around with the people, that's what I was hearing. I I didn't like. I I was I was reading some of the lyrics to that, and I wasn't a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I wasn't hundred percent. I was hundred percent mainly because I didn't know what direction he was going with all that. It's about the people standing up for themselves. I'm all about he that. Knows. I'm all about that, but I'm not about. Uh, yeah. It's the people united will never be defeated. The people united can be some uh, da- some dangerous adversaries to liberty. They could, you know, they can. They're some of the worst types who uh, who band together and uh, use their democratic power or their democratic numbers to force other peoples to do to to you know go along with this with the show get on I the mean, wagon and, and or or get your that's those who would co-opt the people's movements that's those who would you know stand up there and say i was always a member of the people's committee and i'm gonna act like i am now even though i haven't been for so long that's but what i'm fearful of though. we know I mean, who what's up and who's doing what so you can keep an eye on things I think keeping an eye on these guys isn't as easy as it sounds. I think that maybe in the first couple of years or whatever, yes, but usually people will always sink back down to because, like right now, I mean, I hear I have my eye on the ball, and, and we're and all of us we're monitoring this crap. But at the end of the day, I don't want to. I don't want to do any of this. I don't want to. I don't want to read the, the newspaper, ducks. and I don't want to worry about people who run ducks over and all this nonsense. I just want to. Play video games and watch movies and drink and hang out and work on my projects. But nobody wants to watch the Conan playing video games show. <laughs> Actually, uh, it might maybe not in the Liberty uh, community, but I'm sure there's somebody who uh, no. I mean, if you go on YouTube and there's there's scores of. Uh, of oh, who watches those videos? People are like, here's me getting the high score in Halo and. No, 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 so no, 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 no. Videos not, of people yeah. uploading. Here's me playing video games, screen caps. Let me let me refresh that statement. Awful. Let me refresh that statement. I'm talking about Nobody like game cares. reviews, like people review a game before you buy it or something, or they'll, um, or they'll 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 do walkthroughs. Like here are all the secrets. Here are all the Easter eggs. You know, those are things that you Secret know. If, if this, if I get stuck in a game, I might actually 
Google a YouTube video up real quick, and sure enough, some guy, some 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 nice guy out there has made a video of, hey, this is how you get this achievement. This is how you get this Easter egg, and that's kind of nice, and I wouldn't mind doing something. I mean, I make enough other YouTube videos. Why couldn't I do that as well? Um, and at the end of the day, that's what I enjoy doing because that's, that's my escape from, you know, that's from government and from my workplace and from people who play their music out loud and not use earbuds. That's my escape, video games. Just come out into the streets and see where the people can share their music. And because of the zones of uh, safety zones and uh, all sorts of things like that, you can move to a safe distance away from someone or you can blast your music and only hear that or hear someone else's. It's great. What if some guy moves in next to you and starts raising pigs? You can raise some pigs right back at them. In close proximity. <laughs> I mean, close proximity. Because cause if you've got natural wandering pigs and you've got a big land, um, they can walk around. You never smell them. But if they're, well, but if they're living in their filth... Like I'd what go you talk usually... to the neighbor, and if there's going to be bacon made and we're going to be getting in on it, then, I mean, who can be against that? I don't, I don't know. Pigs smell pretty bad, man. Bacon I, smells I, pretty good. Bacon, well, that, bacon, like... bacon is absolutely excep- exceptional, but the smell of a pig... I don't know, man. That's that's a that's that's not that's something you have to that, juggle that's, that's right there. That's part of freedom, though. I mean, you have to. You may not like something that someone is doing, but you know, at the end of the day, I mean, if it's their property, I mean, yeah. I don't think calling the police pigs is productive. Like some people may not like someone's, I don't know, way they do their hair or something, oh, God. but. <laughs> You don't think that's productive? Well, I mean, I guess if they're being bad, then it's okay to be like you're being bad. But the insults, the names, uh, they, they don't really. It just do it just makes them stronger. It, it makes it they they entrench themselves even further because they they see you as the enemy. So here we are preaching the liberty and all, but then you call them a pig, and they're like, you know what? They immediately suspect that all these guys preach. You're the one of them. Yeah, you're one of the enemy. And now that I have, uh, now I have to go out of my way to make life difficult for these individuals, and uh, yeah, and, and it's not good for the liberty folk at all. Uh, I think I think that it is best to, and I have a hard time doing it. I know that people like Ian are really good at it. They can go talk to these politician types and be, you know, be very jolly and uh, have have nice conversations. I have a hard time doing. It. I can't. I just only, but I don't, but I don't say I don't say anything wrong. I just don't talk to him at all. I just stay out of that conversation. I don't think being nice is that hard. You just got to put on a smile. <laughs> <laughs> and sing a little song, play a little reggae. Yeah, or sing the Internationale or something. Smoke a little herb. It all goes away. But I don't smoke. Solidarity. Maybe that's my problem right there. I don't smoke enough herb. Maybe you need to vape. <laughs> Maybe I need to bake it up. That's cool too. I mean, I'm not good with the edibles; they don't work. On I them. don't know, and that's the thing. I haven't even. I think that's that's one that's one thing that I haven't tried yet. I ne- really need to, so I can really determine whether or not um, I'm truly an anti pot guy, as far as liking to do it, not lo- creating laws to pro- prohibit it, but as far as smoking it. No, man, no. Pfft. You're not an insane. I, I am worthless, man. I am absolutely worthless. And you probably don't mm. do any sort of smoking, like not even hookah or cigars. Well, well, well or, first of all, yeah, there, there's a few different types of pot, and one of them like makes you some kind of type makes you lethargic and like want to lay on the couch. Uh huh. And I, I, I think there's like two main types that sound right. Indica and sativa. Sativa tends is to it, be more of like a a head high. Indica tends to be. And more is there of like is there a male female type too? Um, you're smoking the female plants. The male plants produce seeds, they don't, buds, and the, and so even if you're smoking like leaf and and stem and stuff, you're not even. You don't want to smoke leaves and stems, though. Uh, that there is to say, like the best types of green, the leaves and the stems will actually have trichomes on them. But normal green, uh, the leaves and the stems aren't the parts you smoke. The buds now, are. No, like you could you could try whatever type makes you not like want to pass out on the couch and. There's, yeah, there's something that almost make you like work habit ish. So maybe you've tried the wrong type. I've, well, I, that means I've tried a lot of the wrong type because I. Yeah, well, I think I've most got, people got have the 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 chill out version. Like they just want to like do the Daryl and like lean back in their chair and be Daryl. <laughs> I was doing five dollar rides. <laughs> he wasn't. Ch- he wasn't chilling out there. He was. 
Sounds like he was doing quite a lot that He's week. That high weekend, high. <laughs> <laughs> five dollar highs. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, so I guess days. it's quite possible that I, I haven't haven't been around the, the right stuff. Uh, but I mean, at, at the end of the day, I mean, I have to. Uh, Come to Colorado. I, I mean, I agree with stuff. you. The um, I'm not going to Colorado on your road trip. <laughs> road trip. Come skiing or hiking, it's great. <laughs> uh, by the way, but I do have buddies in Colorado. They have moved there just for guess what? Weed. Lots it, of people. But they, have. Moved, but they moved like uh, two, three years ago before it all kicked in. I guess it's when it was medicinal at the time. Yeah. So yeah, I do. I do have buddies in Colorado who I grew up with in you know my hometown. Like, and, I mean, uh, I agree with you. Like, uh, they, and they look like they're having a lot of fun, living in the snow and smoking their dope and living in their hot tubs. Yeah, uh, it's like the 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 humanitarian dream has been achieved there. If only they could get rid of the Fed gov. Yeah, but we'll we'll get ours soon though. I mean, even if even if we miss out this year, they're just gonna they're just gonna roll another bill out. Roll another one. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to. You should, you should get, you should like print out a copy when they do, and <laughs> then you should loud. roll it up and yeah. smoke it. That'd this be is great. what I think about your stupid bill. Are they passed a bill that failed? I guess do they? I guess it wouldn't be a bill then. I was gonna say the veto. I, yeah, I was gonna say take the vetoed bill and roll it up. This is what I think about your fucking vetoed bill. Yeah, Obama Roll can up. come and smoke with all of us. Smoke it up. I know that uh, our our buddy Graham will smoke it right there in the front steps of uh, State House. State House. Yeah, sure. That's what kind of rebel he is. That's a good. G is gonna smoke it up. G probably. Yeah, oh my God, he could probably. Now he could probably use a couple hits. You think yeah, that calm him down, or you think it would make him more excited? It, I guess it depends on what type we're talking about. Is it chill out weed or is it I'm going to work better weed? Which I don't <laughs> I mean, even know how that it works. It depends on the person too. I, I don't think I don't it's think really it's a, like you it, know one it's thing not, is one thing. I'm not. I'm going to work better. I've I've heard it described it's, like it makes you more creative. It settles you down maybe. Makes well, you it's more not artistic. like you're gonna you're gonna go and be like. Oh. It, it makes you more autistic. It's not like the Daryl. <laughs> You know, Why it's not, is it's not like that? You know, where did this Daryl <laughs> snoring coke come <laughs> from? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's this is not a video <laughs> that I've ever seen or a party that I was ever invited to, so I don't know what's going on here. We should watch that Amis video. With, like, you're the drugs. No, let's not. That? Well, maybe we're not. We're not going to incriminate him, are we? No, no because I mean, it's there's... already over. Like the the scene ended, so they can't arrest him now. Is it on AKPF? And by the way, I guess it wasn't. No, it's on. If you look up Freeman TV Raw Amish, maybe I don't know. We'll see what happens. Oh no, I can't. I can't cycle through Freeman. That's so. Oh, it, it, you just look up Amish and it'll pop up. Oh, Garrett, is Garrett it actually? Has to get it. Is it actually listed as Amish? We've it's got... listed as whatever it needs to be listed as. You know, it does what it needs to do. Freeman TV Raw. Oh, we didn't do the uh, the top killers in the world. Let's do that real quick before we break. Amish Paul pull over. There we go. Here we go. I've never seen a cop forward. want to get out of a scene as quickly as this cop. Like, all right. So, bye. is there any audio yeah. on this? There it is. So, you guys got pulled over. Good evening. Good. Hey, good. A lot of people don't realize it, but that stop sign is right at the crosswalk. You know what I'm talking about back there on uh, on Emerald Street. There's a, right where the crosswalk is, just before that, there's actually a stop sign. And I missed it. You're yeah, you did. A lot of people don't actually stop there because they can't see the uh, traffic coming down Main Street. So what they do is they pull ahead. But I just try to remind people that when they do go through that, just to uh, stop there quickly and make sure that no pedestrians are passing. Oh, okay, thanks. That's all. Um, do you mind if I just grab your license real yeah. quick and I'll get you right out of here? Do you mind if I grab your license real quick? He's, he seems like a really nice Whoa. cop, man. He's asking, man. You will be wonder, arrested I'll, if you don't show me. Your of course, I wonder what Amish would have said if. Yeah, I wonder what Amish would have had it gone through if he said no. Yes, I do mind. I'm not. I don't stand for this. <laughs> speaking of. Speaking of the uh, stop signs here in Keene, man, I've been. I've been running stop signs like a madman these days. And, and you know what? What's a stop sign? What did I do? <laughs> <laughs> you rolled through the stop. I did not see that. I slow down a little bit, but I go right through them. So it's a minute 47 since the, since the, the, the car minute, stopped. Right? Big, oh, there it is. Wow. That was pretty That was like 25 seconds. Here you go. 
That's so nice that you don't get tickets for breaking traffic laws. No, I got those drugs. Whose car is this? The Amish's? Yeah, no, usually look at those. Amish's. Look at all those Tron lights on there, man. <laughs> Did you show them your kangaroo bottle? <laughs> oh yeah, that would help. Oh my God. Yeah, you can just put it on a credit card, right? Whatever it is. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. Amish tried to hand him the uh, the credit <laughs> card <laughs> instead of his license. <laughs> That was quick. That was definitely quick. I I noticed, and something that really woke me up the other day is that I was at a, uh, I was at Winchester in 12th, and it, but it's actually 9th, but it turns into 12th, and some old lady was next to me. She pulled up to this to the red light, and it was it was it's a light, not a stop sign, and she just, just went on through, and I was like. I was looking at she was an older lady. She's 60 plus. I was like, wow. You know, either that lady is so senile that she didn't see that red light at all, or she didn't give up. She's a complete. Four dollars on Or. I don't think she's that principal. Or she knows that she can get away with it because she's older, elderly. And if she did get pulled over, she'd just say, oh, yeah, see the light. <laughs> so I don't know. But I mean, it really. I don't know. I, either one or the other. Uh, I, I really liked uh, what I saw, and I have, and I've noticed other people doing the same thing, and and I'm one of them. So when I get to that that red light, especially at nighttime, is like, you know, these some of these laws that we had to put up with that are, are really silly, and I hope that these cops, and, and I just we just see that just now that uh, this particular cop pulled a man over because he went through a stop sign that he admitted that no one notices. Um. Yeah, I definitely uh, I'm in favor, and I applaud anybody who. Uh, yeah, some places like uh, Puerto Rico, uh, at night you you just slow down. You can roll through the red light; they don't mm-hmm. care. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost nice. like a. Yeah, I think the only guys who really get off on the whole stop sign thing are motorcyclists, who they only have to stop and look, and they can just go on through because the. And the only reason they get the uh, pass is because this, the uh, a lot of the sensors can't pick them up. So the lights won't change anyways. The sensors aren't creative enough. <laughs> <laughs> the sensors are not creative enough to pick up the motorcyclists. How much time do we have? Oh, we have about 10 minutes. You want to do this uh, top 19 real quick? Yeah, let's do it. Saw this today. Uh, someone uh, posted up at uh, Viral Nova. Dot com. Isn't that the name of the cat? That is actually the name of the cat. Half <laughs> half of her name. She is not viral. She's actually a she's a skirty, a scaredy Nova. Uh, she's not very viral at all. But here uh, are the top nineteen animals that kill the most humans. I bet G is going to be on the list. Maybe. And the and when I first saw this, I was like, all right, what could I possibly come up with that kills the most? And I went with rats. The uh, plague. Be- and yes, exactly. And I was thinking that uh that would that would be the correct answer. I don't think rats are even on this list. We'll uh, find out in a second. J- Jay, what did, uh James, what did you think when you saw this? Well well I guess point point of clarification, are like mosquitoes considered? Exactly. Animals? When I when I thought anim- when I saw humans or I want animals here, I did not consider bugs. They're animals though. Uh, like that that would be bugs. my 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 guess, but be- I don't know if Because yes, mosquitoes do their fair share, and I also and I also thought ticks would be on that list, um, but we'll find out in a second. Garrett, what did you think when you saw this? Um, well, I think I think everything. And an don't animal, give the answer so. because I know you know the answer. Yeah, everything's an animal. <laughs> um, they're all animals. So you are, you already <laughs> so you already had a good idea from the get go. Sure, uh, and it says that kill. So that's present tense. Yeah. It doesn't say that have killed. So I'm thinking the rats are probably contained at this point where now they're just pets. No, I, I think I think that people. even in present tense, the word kill uh, really does uh, uh, work with the actual answer, the actual the top killer. The top killer in this list, I think, is accurate. Sure, not, why not? Not has killed over time. Um, but anyways, number 19 on the list, leopards. 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 
while there are no official records on Leopard's attacks, confrontations in India are common. And one year at least, they claimed the lives of 15 people. That doesn't seem like many at all. Nope, it doesn't at all. When you consider that there are 6 billion people... Yeah, that seems like I bet stubbing your toe and getting an infection is. That's not even a. That's not even a drop in the bucket. Number eighteen is horses. Um, yes, uh, horses have a tendency to kick people. They seem and very they dangerous. also are used in the rodeos. And a lot of a lot of these clown guys and these rodeo uh, guys are always getting their backs broken and their heads crushed. Um, so no big deal. Cows, the same thing. They kick a lot of people. Oh, so wow. twenty people per year. Uh, and by the way, horses were 20 per year. Americans. Wait, so they're saying that cows and horses kill the same amount of people. Uh, let's see. twenty uh, Horses are 20 Americans each year. It doesn't count anyone else. And Killed by them in the U.S. So I guess that means they mean just a particular piece of the Americas, whereas when they say America with horses, they mean the, the entire continents. Don't North know. And south. Um, when I say America, I mean uh, this whole portion of the globe. But a lot of people, you know, you should use United States for that. Yeah. Horses yeah. seem far more dangerous because more people are riding on top of them and getting thrown about. Yeah, them. but if you work with cattle, uh, especially if you're milking them and stuff, those legs are have a tendency to, especially if you're down there squeezing on their old udders, yeah, and they don't like that. So you get kicked in the head. Um, I think, and there are a lot, uh, yeah, and there are a lot more cows than there are horses. Yeah, but horses seem way jumpier, too. Like, it, a horse could jump up and kick you in the head where a cow couldn't reach that high unless you're bent down. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. it's, it's probably has to do somewhat with um, people have more interactions with cows, too. And there are 16 ants. So, yes, I guess bugs are on this list. There are many types of ants in the world, and combined, they kill over 30 people a year. Fire ants could be deadly. To immobile people. Yeah, and that's one thing. Especially like babies and stuff. That's great about New Hampshire. There's like not no ants. Insects yeah, running don't around. need that garbage. No, no ants. No fire so, uh, ants. That's like the best thing ever. <laughs> Number 15, <laughs> bees. 53 people were killed by bees last year. This is mostly because they were deathly allergic. Number 14, African lions. The latest numbers indicate around 70 people per year were, are killed by lions. It's not so much that they want us, that they want to be, <laughs> What? That doesn't work. But hey, <laughs> king of the jungle, they, they'll they do whatever they want. Uh, f- number 13, jellyfish. Yeah, jellyfish scared me. Yes. I've kicked a jellyfish before. Like a, like in the water or on the like, thing? Yeah, like in the, the Gulf of sand. Mexico and been like, oh, I kicked something big. That's a jellyfish. I'm going to move away. Did you kick Did you kick the bell part of it or the no, tentacles? The, like the body. Yeah, which, the t- the ten- which parts the, of it? Yeah, the tentacles are the part that you don't um, want to touch. Like that part? This no, is, this is like the bell the right here. Yeah, yeah I, those things are... The penis they're, head? They're freaking scary, too, when you see them in the water. And there's all kinds they're of creepy. there's all kinds of different types. Well, I, I don't know. It's like, I, I guess maybe I'm conditioned. I'd much rather see that than something with teeth that can bite. It seems less scary, but at the same time, yeah, you don't want to be near Oh, no, it. those tentacles, man, are bad news. Number oh, yeah. 12, yeah. tigers. You got stung, but. The lion may be the king of the jungle, but the tiger is the king of killing humans, of course, it's a. It's still a relatively low number. They are estimated to kill around 100 humans per year. Number 11, deer. <laughs> no deer are not stabbing people with their antlers, although they could. Although uh, about 120 people per year die in automobile accidents caused by these pesky little bastards. And I'm still oh, looking. Oh, here he comes. There he is. <laughs> You're on number, the list, man. Number 10, domestic dogs. Uh, domestic dogs are awesome, but let's face it, with a horrible owner, they are capable of attacking and killing. 186 people per year have di- have discovered that reality. What do you have to say for yourself, G? This dog, hey, that dog couldn't kill anybody if he wanted to. <laughs> number 9, Cape Buffalo. Uh, number 8... Elephants. Cape Buffalo needs no explanation. Number seven, crocodiles. Oh, well, that's a lot for crocodiles. And here's uh, one I would fully expect to make the list. I'm actually surprised. Crocs are number one. Between 1,500 and 2,500 people per year are violently killed by crocodiles. Can't imagine crocodiles kill any other way. But guess what kills more than crocodiles? Hippos. Hippopotamus. And actually, they Those actually, things are, de- are yeah, yeah. They, they actually kill people. crocodiles. 
they those eat, things they, are scary. They I just, they just chomp them and they them. chomp them in half. Just go out yeah, there. Yeah, like they'll, they'll like charge you, or, and they'll charge. They'll bite like uh, canoes in half and stuff. Yeah, they're those. They're are the are largest cool. mammals, I think. Yeah, hippos are dangerous. Number five, scorpions. With more than fifteen hundred different species of scorpions, only about twenty five had deadly poison. And those 25 do some serious damage, killing as many as 5,000 people per year. Number four, snakes. Now, I know why we are all, we all fear snakes as much, because we should. They kill as many as 50,000 people worldwide each year. Often, it's a simple, it's simple from, simply from being, from feeling the human presence as a threat of attacking snakes. Another, another good thing about New Hampshire, I don't think there's too many snakes running there around. Are rattlesnakes, I saw, I saw a, a little rat snake, a little uh, grass snake the other day. Yeah, but right there's, there? like, there's not like water moccasins if you go swimming, no, I don't think. Right? none of that garbage. Number three, the testes fly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's <laughs> is it, or is it, it setsies? It, it's not teetsy, is it? Teetsy, setsy. I always heard te- teetsy, I think. <laughs> I'm going to go with... I think that uh, I think that the amount of people that it's killing the five hundred thousand people, most of them from Africa, s- is sucky like tetsicles. So tetsies is gonna be stick. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Setsies probably. Yeah, f- thing man. Five hundred thousand people, but not as many as mosquitoes. Mosquitoes kill a million people per year from malaria. These yeah, guys suck, man. They're in New Hampshire. New Hampshire, and there was some West Nile shit down like last year, and like. Fitzwilliam or something. That's a conspiracy. Yeah. And number one, Garrett, you were absolutely right. Tanks. <laughs> tanks, tanks with killed the most tanks people. with humans on them. Tanks with sandbags drone. on top. There's sandbags on. And top. who dr- and who drives those tanks? Them in the flood, like the Bearcat. <laughs> humans. <laughs> Horrible. They kill more humans than anyone else. Like, I don't know. I think every other creature. Great. They don't need sandbags. I mean, they can. Uh, they can drop drone bombs. They don't even have to hide. They can hide in Arizona. They can drop drone well, bombs from across the They can stay buttoned up, and they can still operate the machine gun. I don't understand why they're. That I don't. Dude's I don't, on I don't understand why humans do what bullshit. they do. They're horrible, horrible pe- people. We should ban tanks. Will not stand. Hey, everybody! You've been watching Black Sheep Rising. You can catch us and all the episodes, the archives, the show notes, everything at blacksheeprising.org. You can also check us out at YouTube. You can check us out at Facebook, Stitcher, iTunes. We're all there. If you have anything you want to leave us, you can leave a message at any of those locations, or you can leave us a message at the w- email address, show at blacksheeprising.org, or like this guy from California, if you want to leave us a voicemail, 267-521-2771. Leave us a message, anything you want, positive or negative. Creative or uncreative? Censorship or non-censorship? I'm not going to censor it. I'm going to play it. I promise you. And we're going to laugh at it. 